Ci va shilom me që përkatës e zile by Simon Altaf from North America and the beautiful state of Ohio. Good morning to you all and a good afternoon and a good evening to those of you abroad and other places in the north, west and south of the countries. Okay, so today is basically Torah Pasha Vayikra. It's a book of Leviticus. Chapter 1 is our Pasha. And also I wanted to express something very, very important. Before I go into that, I wanted to give you a little update on coronavirus. Those of you who have been listening to the President of the U.S., Mr. Trump, he is doing a stellar job at containing this virus and trying to eradicate it. As you know that he comes online every day on the live website at, uh, at the White House and he gives a speech every day and there's a, a task force uh, that, you know, a corona task force with him that they give updates on what's going on and what they're doing and how they're trying to contain the virus and, and defeat the virus in the country and across, you know, across the world as well, they're trying, how they're trying to help other countries. So, you know, all those updates, if you're not sure, you know, you go onto the White House website, which is live, and that's also broadcast at that time through Fox News, and probably other news channels are also broadcasting that live, you know, uh, 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Sometimes it's a little delayed. Sometimes it, it comes at 5.30, and yesterday I think he came rather late because he was in the middle of a, a conference uh, you know, with the two trillion, two point two trillion dollar package that is giving to the country, so he was about, you know, an hour late. So he came about roughly six o'clock in the evening to the conference. So if you are following the president, then you should be pretty up to date with what is going on in the country. But I will give you my synopsis. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what the president is doing because obviously he's doing that as a, a bigger thing for the whole country. You know, putting up uh, extra hospitals in New York. Uh, sending in uh, medication to New York because New York is almost seems like the epicenter of the disease. You know, there's, there's a lot of infections over there and uh, a lot of people are being treated in New York. New York to me seems like worst case scenario and after New York, I think the next places, unless I'm mistaken, are places like uh, the Carolinas. The North Carolina, I believe, is also affected. Uh, although they don't talk about much about North Carolina, but I do believe that that's also an affected spot. I'm not sure uh, what the numbers are, but, uh, you know, for the numbers, I'm pretty sure you could just Google the numbers. Uh, should I for that, Rabbi Akifa? Louisiana and California, I, I think, are also a part of the parcel. And uh, there, there's, there's been a few deaths, you know, around the country for people who acquired it. Now, it is a... Let me put, put out something. It is fake news that says to you that the young will not be affected and only the, only the people over 50. That is totally false. Anybody, anybody, I don't care if they are 5 years old or they are 50 years old or they are 500 years old. If you get the disease and your immunity is low and it doesn't matter what age group you are, you can be affected. You can still acquire the disease and you can still succumb to the disease unless, unless you deal with it uh, quickly in our early stages. The quicker you grasp that you have this illness, the quicker you can deal with it and the quicker you will be healed. Now, of course, uh, the president is helping establish centers across America, I believe supermarkets and other places, and you may have to find out what is your nearest center because if you are feeling that you might have the illness, then you have to go and grab a, a self-testing kit in which you are supposed to take your swab of your nose and you then deliver that back to the people over there and they can tell you within 45 minutes whether you have the illness or not. And I believe that another company, I think it was Abbott Labor Laboratories. Abbott Laboratories, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and they are doing a test which will determine the disease in 15 minutes time. I'm not sure that is a ready test. I think that's, that's uh, uh, being put forward to the FDA, I believe, and they have to prove it. So, 
I'm I'm a little bit uh, unsure whether that's Abbott Laboratory. I think they did say Abbott because there's also Roche and Roche, I believe, are doing other things like you know masks and and so on and so forth because Roche is a medical company that's dealing with uh, probably the medical masks and probably some other medication. And as you know, that the medicine of choice so far to treat this disease are the simple malaria tablets. Now, be careful that you don't go out rushing trying to take malaria tablets that you think are malaria tablets because some people have accidentally taken chlorophyll instead of chloroquine and they've ended up causing themselves more harm than good. And some people, there was a particular couple that they ended up taking chloroquine sulfate. Now chloroquine sulfate that they took was for the fish tank and they ended up poisoning themselves and one person, the, the man who was over 50, died and, the, and his wife survived. So don't go out rushing like an idiot, you know, headless chicken trying to get chloroquine sulfate and taking it accidentally when, when that may not be the medicine. And don't, don't think that everything that sounds chloroquine is malarial tablets, you know, so be, be careful about that. I did last week, I did point out that there is a, a medicine that's readily available. Now, I'll tell you that in a second. But the medicine that we're looking for are basically, if you go to any pharmacy and you say to them, I want the malarial tablets, just that. They know what you're asking for. You know, and in America, the malarial tablets go under the name of hydroxychloroquine. So the problem with American pharmacies is that you cannot get this medicine from pharmacy without a doctor's prescription. So if you're just going to turn up at CVS and say, hey, uh, sir, could I have the hydroxychloroquine? And they're going to say, no, do you have a prescription? So they won't sell it to you. So you're not going to get it. My suggestion now in England, those of you living in Europe, I believe, and I have done it in the past, this is readily available from every pharmacy in England without a prescription because it's considered something that you should take if you're traveling because England doesn't have malaria. It's technically eradicated over there. But you might be traveling to the Middle East, you might be going eastward or Africa or somewhere, so they will sell you those tablets provided they have them, and mostly they do. But what has happened, where I, and I heard this from the East, there has been a run on chloroquine tablets and uh, the doctors have uh, hoarded all the chloroquine tablets they can find so they can treat patients and now ordinary people can't find chloroquine tablets on the pharmacy so no go there either. So what is the alternative? Let me give you an alternative. It is called Artemisia annua. Now let me type that in. Artemisia annua. Now that is the equivalent liquid form and it also comes in tablet and, you know, gel caps. And I would suggest you get the liquid tincture format. Artemisia annua is readily available from eBay, possibly from Walmart, uh, not Walmart, from uh, Amazon, possibly. I, uh, don't quote me for, for Amazon. But it is readily, readily available from eBay. Now, I already have that because, you know, I travel, so I keep a supply with me when I travel. So, this is the one that you want. This is the choice drug. Choice drug, and it is better than chloroquine in tablet form, by the way. It's better than that because it is very concentrated and it is liquid. And it is Artemisia annua. R-A-R-T-I-M-E-S-I-A. That's A R T. I-N-E-S-I-A, A-N-N-U-A. Now, if you Google that, and maybe sometimes the spelling is different for some websites, if you Google that, you should get lots of hits on that particular product, and it's a plant. It's a plant base, and it is called sweet wormwood or sagewood. And this plant, by the way, is a plant that will treat you know, these, these uh, malarial types of uh, issues and situations. And if you just type in uh, maybe, you know, tincture or extract, and if you type in an extract 
and I'm pretty sure that it will it will pop up with lots of pictures. And I mean, I'm doing it right now over here, and it says here that uh, RT mis RT misinin comp comprises anti-malarial agents that makes its supplemental effective against microbial attacks. The flower and leaves of Artemisia annua undergo distillation to extract artemisinin. This extract contains three isoprene, I, isoprene units connected together with organic esters. In other words, this, by the way, this, <laughs> think about sweet wormwood. You know what wormwood is in the Bible? Bitter water. So, bitter water. And uh, no luxury class, I'm not into this. Uh, it's up to you if you want to eat a plant-based diet. I don't uh, force people to get into any particular diet. So having said that, so my suggestion is that you get this Artemisia annua. Now be careful. There are varieties of Artemisia that do not treat malaria. So please don't do this thing that this man did. Uh, you know, running around, you know, in Florida and getting chlorophyll, which you feed to your plants, drinking it. Don't do that kind of stupid nonsense. Don't do that. You know, save yourself the headache. If you're not sure, write me an email and ask me. If you do find something and you're not sure if that's the right thing to do, it's the right medication, ask me. And I'll be able to guide you. And that would be, you know, my email address you already know. If you don't know, it's shimon 63 S H I M O U N 63 at yahoo.com. So write to me and uh, whatever medication that you're looking to buy, and, and I'm giving you this plant based variety because one of the questions that I received was, is it safe for pregnant women? And the answer is yes, this one is safe. And they asked me, is the regular chloroquine tablets, are they safe for pregnant women? And the answer is, we don't know. Okay? So, we don't have enough data to qualify whether they are safe or not safe. And luxury class, the last thing we want to talk about right now is unclean ingredients, okay? So, this is about saving lives. So, let's not go there because, you know, you're probably not aware that even a pig, you know, if you take a pig, that they make uh, heart medication out of the pig. And even they are, are considered kosher, by the way, you know, permissible. Permissible, that's what kosher to me means. So, please don't talk about these things here. You know, there's enough fear out there, and there's already enough religion out there, and we don't need to push religion down people's throats. So, what it is right now is for people's lives to be saved, and what we need to do is help people, and not, you know, try to push religion down their throat. Hey, you can't do this and can't do that. No, we're not into that right now. And because the ingredients get processed, I think we spoke about this uh, a couple of weeks back, that even pig's hair. Pig's hair is used to produce the brushes that most people use, and actually they are permissible. Why? Because when they go through the cleaning process, it's no longer considered unclean. And un unfortunately, a lot of people out there that consider themselves quotation marks, or oh, Torah experts, even they don't know that. So... So therefore, yes, you can even use pig's brush, uh, pig's hair brush, which is basically predominantly what they're made in, in countries like China, and they are still permissible. Having said that, uh, all medication that is out there to save lives are permissible. That's period, you know. You heard it from me, I don't need to keep saying it again. All medication out there that saves lives is permissible, even if, even if it's pig's liver, even if it's pig's spleen, they're all permissible because they are to save lives. Torah, Torah is about saving lives. The God's law is not about putting you in a bondage and slavery. It's about saving your life and promoting your life and your, you know, health. Now, of course, we do not directly go and, you know, cook uh, the pork meat, but there are reasons for that, and you know the reasons that because, you know, it wasn't considered regular meat. You know, regular meat would be beef, you know, beautiful beef in America, fantastic, fantastic cows, fantastic bulls, you know, we have the best cow meat in this country, best beef in this country, and, uh, you know, those of you living in Europe, you know, you heard of the Angus, you know, you heard of the Scotland's, Scotland's uh, prime beef, and very, very famous, so, you know, we don't need to we don't need to get our meat from pork because pork is prohibited to us for various reasons that God knows best. 
I'm not an expert on the pork. All I can tell you is that it is not permitted to us. And God knows why and why we shouldn't be consuming it. And we don't go there. We just accept what God has told us to do. I don't need to tell you about the trichinosis. I don't need to tell you about the ringworm and all of that that comes from it. I think they are side talk. But what God said is enough for me. Don't consume it. That's enough for me. I'm happy with that. So, having said that, uh, now also there another subject that came up, and I, and I wanted to inform you, those of you who count yourself as part of the house of Israel, you have to do a ransom offering this week or next week, and has to be done before Passover. It is a mitzvah, it is a commandment. Everybody that counts their, themselves as part of Israel, they have to send half a shekel, half a shekel of silver, now, by the way, we have to calculate that according to today, according to 2020, 28th of March. That I have calculated to be $5. $5, if you are 20 years and older, and you consider yourself as part of Israel, now you may not have formal conversion, and that doesn't matter, because if you, you know, conversion can happen any time you, you desire, publicly or privately. But the half a shekel of silver is for all those people that consider themselves part of Israel. You can find the commandment in Exodus chapter 30, verse 13. I'll repeat it again. Exodus chapter 30, verse 13. The commandment is there. That when, when Moses was instructed to do the count, and he was told to pick out people 20 years and older, and count each person with half a shekel, to be given to the Kohen in the gate, Aaron's sons basically. And so that's what they did. So all of you that count yourself as Israel, you are to send in five dollars. You got my email address, uh, you have the Abrahamic-Faith info website, or you have the forever-israel.com website. There is a donate now button on there. All you got to do is five dollars, you got to push it out uh, as part of Israel. Now, you may not have a debit card or a credit card. And those of you that don't, you just simply need to write a check, Rabbi Lamont Clofus, to San Antonio address listed on our website. The websites I've already given you that are forever-israel.com. There is an address there for Rabbi Kifa, and his Gentile name is Rabbi Lamont Clofus. You can send in a $5 check. Uh, that covers your half a shekel, by the way. And uh, this is done before Passover. Yes, you can do it through PayPal as well. So PayPal or, or uh, you know, snail mail, whichever way you prefer. If you're part of Israel, you have to do that. Now, so that's that bit. Now, as you know that the Passover uh, is next week. Uh, sorry, not next week. It'll be, let me have a look, because depending on which Passover you do, for us this next week, April 3rd, for us who do the Hanuk calendar, we're doing the April 3rd Passover, but those of you doing the uh, Jewish lunar calendar, then your Passover is a little later than us. So, uh, you know, uh, for us it will be Friday next week, we start our Passover, and for uh, other people it will be, you know, some other uh, the, fol the following week, I believe, it's uh, the, the regular Jewish Passover. So, whichever one you're doing, you know, whichever one you're doing, uh, you can uh, do that according to the uh, dates that are normally printed. So, as I said, those of you doing the Jewish version, the Jewish version be uh, begins April 9. April 8 is the evening starting, April 8, but it begins April 9, the daylight. So, April 9, I believe, is on a, let me check on the calendar. It's a Thursday. So, it's a Thursday, April 9. Yes, it, it begins at even on April 8, because it's a lunar calendar. But we do the solar calendar, uh, which is the sunrise. So, we do ours April 3rd. By the way, our Passover date never changes. We never argue about it. We never quarrel about it. We don't say when and how and when not. We know every year it's the same day. April 3rd never changes. So you never have to ask me again when is the Passover. Our All of our festivals that are calculated on the 
Hanukkah calendar, the Enoch calendar, never change dates. They're the same date every year. So that's a great, that's a great thing. Because you already know in advance when to take your days off and when not to take your days off. Because the first day, unleavened bread, on the Passover is day off work, if you can get it in the Gentile world. And the last day is day off, the day eight, if you can get it again. You know, those two days are commanded off, provided that you are in the Gentile kingdom, and you can get it off, great. If you can't, then, you know, you just have to bear with it and, and, and you know, work for your families. But from what I understand this year, Oh, the whole world is off for Passover. So, Brokish <laughs> and Yahweh, everybody is off this year. So, they can, maybe, you know, that, that, that's something interesting. That just like in biblical times, when we had the plagues about to come, God told the Israelites to stay indoors. So, now we have our president and every other country's president telling people to stay indoors and wash their hands. By the way, we washed our hands all the time anyway. So, now we have the, you know, this, this, this plague, I call it, a, it's technically a plague. This plague is going around killing people, so therefore you're told to stay indoors and wash your hands. And, uh, as I said last week for coronavirus, the best thing you can do is get yourself an antibacterial soap. Uh, or the soap of choice is carbolic acid soap. Failing to get that, you can get any antibacterial soap so that when you come into your house from outside, the first thing you should be doing is wash your hands. And any surfaces you touched, I would suggest this. Let me give you a little recipe. Get yourself some aloe vera gel, uh, get some witch hazel, and get some alcohol. Mix the three together, and boom, 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 you have your perfectly great sanitizer. Then you can use a sanitizer when you go out, when you come in, and you can also use a sanitizer to clean your door handles and any surface you feel that you touched, you know, use that to clean your uh, inside the house. In other words, especially door handles. You know, just put it, put a little, you know, get a little spray bottle. Uh, and the other thing you can do is you can take some alcohol, regular alcohol, very cheap at Walmart. You can pick up some regular alcohol. Uh, you can, you know, add, if you like, you can add uh some little bit water to that, and a little bit witch hazel if you prefer. And uh, some of you, if you like to make it more stronger, you can add a little tea tree oil, and you don't have to. It's just alcohol by itself, and uh, you know it becomes like a disinfectant. And you can just spray it on a door handle and just wipe it clean, and that'll do it. Okay, that that's sufficient. Now, of course, in some countries, in Islamic countries, if you're listening over there. You know, you may not get alcohol uh, liberally over there. So what do you do? What's the alternative? Well, the alter alternative you, you will have a smile is Dettol. Just get Dettol and just, just use Dettol to clean your handles and your door handles and stuff like that. And you can use Dettol instead of alcohol. If you don't get alcohol, you can get Dettol and you can add aloe vera to it and you've got a beautiful, beautiful hand gel for yourself. Okay? It's a great gel. You can make it yourself. You don't need to go to Walmart. I went to Walmart twice, uh, once yesterday and once last week. I could not find any hand gels. So I'm going to make my own. And uh, I would suggest that those of you who have to go out occasionally or maybe for job-related purposes, make your own hand sanitizer. That you can maybe, you know, put it in a little bottle. If you're a driver, if you drive a truck or if you, you know, do a driving job, Uber driver or something, then you can just use that hand sanitizer to help yourself, you know, keep your hands uh, disinfected. And because really, the way the disease works, the way this virus works, it attaches itself to your hands. Also, it can attach itself to your clothes. If you're in an infected area, it can attach itself to your clothes and to your hair. Now, if you already got suitable covering, you know, like me, I wear a hat all the time. I'm not worried about my hair so much. But, you know, all I have to worry about is my hat. So, <laughs> I have to probably put a little bit, little bit disinfectant on that, but otherwise my hat is pretty good. So, my, having said that, if you're, you know, if you're going out, then the advisable thing to do is when you come back indoors, just, you know, take your clothes off, 
get under the shower, just wash yourself clean, and then put your clothes in the machine and, and, and run the clothes in the machine. And that's it, you're done, you know, you're clean. But with myself, what I mostly do is when I come in from outside, uh, yeah, set the hat in the sun and that'll kill the virus uh, over 26, 26 degrees uh, Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit roughly, 78.8, you know, if, if you're above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, the virus cannot survive in the sun. Now, of course, it's a little colder over here right now. It's not 80 yet. So, you know, the, the best thing to do is remember the virus doesn't live forever. Also, let me point out something. The virus does not live forever. Even if it is on your head and you don't do nothing, the virus by itself will die after 10 hours. It will it'll be dead because it can't do nothing on a head. What's it going to do on a head? Lay eggs? <laughs> can't do nothing. So, therefore, by itself it will be dead in 10 hours. But if you are passing it on, because it needs, it needs a host. It needs a host to survive. Let me point out some other important factor. The virus needs moist atmosphere to survive. It cannot survive on a dry cloth. You know, cloth is dry, it's not moist. As long as your piece of cloth is not wet, your virus cannot survive on it for more than 10 hours. Even if you don't do nothing. You just threw your clothes on the side of the room and didn't do nothing to them and they were not moist. The virus will be dead in 10 hours. It cannot survive. Without even, don't even have to wash it. You just leave it to one side and wash it the next day. The virus is already dead. So the only thing I would say active is your hands and your shoes. You know, when you come in from outside, you're wearing your shoes and you put them to one side. And again, it's an object and the virus will die in 10 hours, okay, even on your shoes. Now, you may want to put some disinfectant on your shoes if you like. I mean, you can do it. I haven't been doing that, to be honest. But if you like, you can do that just to, you know, extra protection. You know, put it on the surface of the shoe. On top of the shoe, the surface is just wipe it with the cloth. But having said that, that's if you really want to do it. If you really want to be squeaky clean, uh, I haven't been doing it. You know, hands up. I'm not you know, worried so, so much worried about that because... Like I told you that if anything is on a surface and the surface is dry, the virus will not survive. Now, this, now they're saying 10 hours, but data right now that's coming in is proving that it is overblown. It's a little bit overblown uh, in the media. And as I had instructed you last week, I instruct you again, is not to uh, indulge in media. The only media that you should be listening to is your president. If you are in America, you should be listening to your president. A broadcast happens every day at 5 o'clock. You should be glued to that broadcast. It goes from about one hour to two hours. And I, I, honestly, I, I see it every day, by the way. I do. So I would advise you do the same. You, you do the same. Uh, no, Devora. <laughs> I know some people have been pushing this prophecy out, Christians especially. Christians have been pushing this prophecy out with Isaiah 2620 uh, that, you know, we're supposed to shut ourselves in the house. No, it has nothing to do with that. By the way, that prophecy is for the land of Israel. It has nothing to do with America, Pakistan, India, Korea, China. No, nothing to do with it. So, don't, don't use, you know, verses from the Bible ignorantly trying to sound like a, you know, ignorant Christian because all you're going to get is pushback because rightly, rightly so. Because that is nothing to do with the coronavirus. That is a time of the restoration of Israel. That is yet future. It is not yet here. Unless the Messiah turns up next week, April 8th, you know, he lands in Israel. Then you can say, ah, yeah, this prophecy is about the Messiah returning. But I am pretty sure, and you can, you know, definitely correct me if I'm wrong, the Messiah is not coming next week, by the way. I can guarantee you that. Guarantee it. It's not coming. Uh, Eddie is saying that our president has been holding a news conference update every day, which is unprecedented and great to give info directly to us. Absolutely, Eddie. So that's why I say to everybody, every American out there, that the only broadcast that you should be tuning into is the president's broadcast. You know, don't go listening to what this Tom said and what Jerry said and what Hanky said and what Panky said. You know, stop listening to the idiots out there and, you know, conspiracy theorists and wasting time and effort and fake news all over the place. So don't do that. Save yourself the time 
and the moment to better your lives. Better your lives, please. You know, I keep saying that. Is that you can get this conference on YouTube. Just search live news or president broadcast. You know, it will come up. There's many, many channels broadcasting it. I, what I normally do, I go to the White House directly. And I think the link is, let me find the link, www.whitehouse. I can even type it in here. Gov. Stroke live. Hey, look, I've memorized the link. So it's just whitehouse.gov.live. So whitehouse.gov, G O V, forward slash live. That is the link. That will take you to the White House website and it, it will be broadcast at around about five. Sometimes the president's late because you've got to appreciate that he's a busy man. You know, he's dealing with a lot of things going on over there. He's already commandeered General Motors to produce ventilators. Two other car companies are producing ventilators. We are going full steam ahead to produce ventilators because when, when people who are succumbed by the disease, they do need ventilator help at times. So that is a critical piece of equipment that the car companies are helping to produce and uh, the president's gone on a wartime footing to produce those en masse. Uh, by the way, you may have heard that Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of UK, also has a coronavirus, so does Prince Charles, and I believe the health minister there also has it. So the president was saying yesterday that the he had a conversation with the, Mr. Boris Johnson yesterday, and Mr. Boris Johnson asked for ventilators. So they are saying that they will be producing ventilators to ship to their friends in, in Germany, in England, France, and Italy, and other places. So, therefore, uh, this is what's going on, and, and that's just an update. Uh, the, uh, Simha, the ingredients to make your, own, uh, make your own sanitizer, hand sanitizer, because one thing you're going to find is you're not going to find hand sanitizer out there. So, the best way to make it is use witch hazel, very cheap. You can buy it for about 2 or $3 a bottle in Walmart. Uh, you can get a bottle of alcohol. Sorry, not even two dollars. It's probably less than two dollars for a bottle of alcohol, witch hazel, and the only other ingredient you need, the only other ingredient is aloe vera gel. That's it. Three ingredients. That will make your beautiful hand gel, and you can carry it with you, and you can use it all over the place. So easy to make, uh, and there's no need to have a rush. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna teach you how to make toilet paper. <laughs> for, that, for that, we have to chop down some trees. But I will simply suggest to you is learn to use the water because water is best for you. And yes, you may use a tissue paper afterwards, but water is best. And put a bidet, you know, you might say, what the heck is a bidet? A bidet is a, a term for it, uh, like a water that fits onto your toilet and it helps to, to clean your butt. And uh, it's the best thing since a slice of bread. I don't know if you've heard of it, but maybe something you want to you know, look at. And uh, these are uh, inexpensive items, you know, some of these can be bought for about $12, $15, you know, from uh, websites. And you can just have them fitted very easily to your toilet, very easily fitted. Some of them you can fit yourself. If you don't know how to fit it, you can ask a plumber to fit it, and they'll probably charge you some money for it. So I would suggest that, you know, learn to wipe your butt with water as the Israelites did in the past. You know, they didn't use tissue paper. So don't be so mad about tissue paper and trying to find it because I have gone to Walmart twice in about a week and there was no tissue paper there for the toilets, by the way. And this is a big Walmart that's 24 hours. So I'm pretty sure that the situation is pretty same everywhere else. So unless you love your tissue paper and you decorate your rooms with it, that's a different story. But you know, some of, I know some people use tissue paper, toilet tissue paper for the kitchen. I know that some people do that too. So, but there are kitchen towels, by the way. Uh, when I went to Walmart yesterday, there were plenty of paper towels for the kitchen, but there was no toilet paper. No big deal to me, because I am not into kitchen, uh, into toilet paper. Uh, I, I, I like to use water. That's, a, that's what I've been taught as a child, and that's what I would do as an adult as well. So, that's that. Uh, Yes, Daniel. Daniel is saying that if you don't have a bidet, 
you can use a movable shower head works just the same i'm pretty sure you can daniel yes but i think you just need to get the fitting because they do come ready made with a little pipe and a little contraption adapter thing that hooks onto your toilet uh and then you know it can give you water directly from the same cold feed that goes into your toilet can also go into the bidet and it has a little lock so no water leaks now depending on the quality some of them can be become leaky afterwards and some of them don't so again you know it's something to look at now of course you can do what the asians do and the you know the the asians over there in india and pakistan and sri lanka all those countries what they do they have a little uh little uh, little pot with a little you know with a little snout and that snout they call lota and they use that and they just fill that and they just use that to to clean themselves and then they put it to one side in the in the bathroom so that little snout you might have seen it in the arab countries in uh, those countries yeah they they are readily available so you don't have to have you don't have to put uh, this little bidet you don't need to you can even use a little snout and you can buy this little snout kind of thing from most uh, south east asian stores most of them sell it you can buy it online fairly inexpensive i'm pretty sure it's not going to be more than 10 dollars okay so that's another way to do it and I, i used to do a lot you know i don't just say i used to i still do i do a lot of traveling and i did find one one bottle online and i have it and it you fill it up and it's got a little shower thing on it and like very tiny one and you're supposed to use that on your journey on your travel journey and the idea of that is to clean your butt and of course to to conserve water and believe me <laughs> i've had places where i couldn't find water so i had to conserve water i remember the time i'm not forgotten the time i was in pakistan and in this particular place i went to the wedding and uh you know in the morning they had regular water but in the morning the electric goes off they have load shedding so the water stops and you know i had one glass of water and i had to use that one glass of water to wash my face to shave to brush my teeth and and uh, as for the shower well that had to be missed because there was no water so i had to do everything with that one glass of water and i did i used that one glass of water to do everything so uh, water is is precious and sometimes it's just not enough available in some places but of course uh, in pakistan we get that we get uh, over there you do get uh, uh, load shedding and what happens especially today i know that where where i was staying in pakistan every shabar every saturday 9 o- sorry 8 o'clock Eight o'clock, the the electric will go off, and it will not come on till about four o'clock in the afternoon. So there will be no no water coming up from the tap. So you'd have to use water that's stored in your tank, and then you could use that water, but you're not going to have water coming out of the tap at that time. Now, if you got a tank, sure you can fill up your little tub and you can do your shower and everything. You know, considering that you have the water, and I was there. I was there and I saw people Christian families who lived across the road they were sharing water they were sending you know gallons of water to each other like a family would say hey I've run out of water could you please go grab a gallon from the next door neighbor they maybe have some and so the next door neighbor they had a little tank fitted so they were able to give a, a gallon of water to their neighbor that by the way is very common over there so I was like my goodness you know people in America they don't know what how good they have it you know they're always moaning and complaining uh, especially you know americans don't do so much complaining but england my goodness british people always moaning and complaining always and uh, yet they have water all the time electric all the time still they're moaning and complaining and gas all the time and in pakistan there's load shedding on gas load shedding on on electric so you can imagine that uh, you know people have to make do with storage water and other things So that's that that's the update on coronavirus we talked about the passover now let's talk about ourselves and let's talk about the pasha so the pasha today is pasha's vayikra now uh <clears throat> pasha's vayikra let me go there a little bit and let me pull it up let me find it pasha's vayikra 
very interesting Vayikra, let's see Vayikra ok, here we go ok, and I find myself at the wrong place I've gone too far back I ended up in Exodus we should have left Egypt long ago but I'm still in Egypt for some reason so it says, And Yahweh called to Moshe and spoke to him out of the tent of the appointed time, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, If any man from you bring an offering to Yahweh, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If this offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tent of the appointed times before Yahweh. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before Yahweh, and the Kohanim Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tent of the appointed times. Okay. So what does it mean, he shall kill the bull? What, the person bringing the bull will kill the bull? No. All this means is that the person, uh, they may be a very rich man, and he wants to offer an atonement for his family. So what he would do, he would bring a bull. Now, he's not going to bring a bull, you know, let me, let me make something clear over here. He is not bringing a bull to the, he's not going to the market and saying, hey, give me a bull, I need to offer it. No, the bulls are already available in the temple. The temple had an area in which they stored their animals, their sheep, their bulls, their goats, their pigeons, their doves, everything. Turtle doves, the whole works. So, there was an area in Bethlehem where all this was stored. So, the rich man would come and say, Hey, I need to offer a bull. So, they will summon a bull that is richly pure and it will come from Bethlehem area or the area close to the temple and they will bring it and then the Kohanim will slaughter that. That's what this means. And if a person said, Hey, I like to offer a a, a sheep, then they would bring a sheep. So the, what the person would do, the rich man, he would give the money in equivalent value of the bull. And the money was in silver coins, by the way. There was always money around, and it was in silver coins. So they would give the silver coins to the person that is giving the bull, and the, and the bulls, and the goats, and the lambs, they had to be richly pure. Therefore, it's not like, hey, let me go to the market and find myself a goat. Because, you know, you may find yourself a cheap goat that has a blemish and it will not be accepted and you'll be turned away. So, you know, this idea that people have that somehow everybody did their own purchases is absolutely wrong. They didn't do any purchases. They went and they gave equivalent value of the money to the bull, uh, people who are holding the, the, the bull, the sheep, the lamb. <laughs> no, it wasn't like going to Walmart, absolutely. So they give that and they say, you know, they say to the priest, Sir, you know, uh, I would like to offer a bull for my family, or I'd like to offer two lambs, or I want to give two turtle doves. So therefore, that was an acceptable, because remember, you couldn't go to Walmart and buy a goat and take it over there and say, Oh, well, go Walmart selling goats cheap, you know, they're selling it for 50 bucks instead of 100. Let me take it from Walmart. No, it would not be acceptable. Walmart's goat will not be acceptable, but the goat that came from close to the temple's herd will be acceptable. That's how that was done. Now, of course, today we don't have a temple. We have an equivalent offering. Now, people say, hey, you don't have a temple. So what if we don't have a temple? We didn't have a temple in Vahikra, Le Le Leviticus 1 either. We had a tent, right? So we didn't have a temple there either. A lot of people argue, hey, you didn't have a temple. So why should I give you a tithe? No, you don't need a temple for a tithe. Tithe was all, always given at the inception of the Israelites as a nation. It was commanded to give tithe and there was no temple at that time either. And so therefore, it was a, always an equivalent money given for a bull, sheep, goat, you know, turtle, dove, flower, whatever it is. Always it was like that. And so that was done and the priest knew exactly, you know, which item has been given and which item to take because there were other items, there were other things. It wasn't just a bull. There might have been wine, there was salt. All of those things were needed to add to the burnt offering or to the, uh, you know, Thanksgiving offering or whatever offering it was, atonement offering. 
and so on and so forth, or grain offering, etc. So this chapter, chapter 1, chapter 2, you know, chapter 3 is all about offerings, grain offerings, bull offerings, goat offerings. It's all about offerings and it's all about the, Levit- you know, the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, etc., etc., and etc., and ad, ad hominem. You know, so all about that up to what, chapter 5, chapter 6. All chapter 6 is talking about these things, trespass offerings, you know, other offerings. So everything to do with, everything to do with things that you do wrong and how to correct them. Now, I will leave that subject there and there was another subject that came to me uh, while I was looking at uh, a passage about the husband and wife, and it was in, uh, uh, where was it? <coughs> Ex- uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as to Yahweh, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Messiah is the head of the congregation, and is the savior of the body. Okay, what does it actually mean? Now, of course, technically, According to Paul's letter, and you know, it didn't have to be Paul; it could be somebody else. It could be the Torah. What they were saying is that the, there is a head, of, there's a, a head of a house, and they they presented that as the uh, as the husband. Now there is a secondary meaning, a, a secondary meaning to this, and that is this: that your being a husband to your wife. You know, a submission. It's so much submission. And a lot of people don't like this, the word submission. A lot of people hate this word, especially women in the West. They hate this word submission. They think oh, it's some kind of servitude. No, because the secondary meaning I like to present to you today of the Ephesians uh, letter is that it is talking about your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is subservient to your conscious mind. Now, it's a wife and husband relationship. Now, also one other thing, it's not a command relationship because a lot of the LOA teachers, Law of Attraction teachers out there, they will say to you that command your subconscious mind to do this thing and it will happen. No, you should not command it because just like real people out there, nobody likes to be commanded. So, don't look at it as a command. You have to persuade it to do the right thing. So, how do we persuade our subconscious mind to do the right thing? Well, we use affirmations. Affirmations is a way to persuade the subconscious mind to accept what I'm saying as true. When I say, I am a millionaire, I'm expecting the, the, I'm expecting the subconscious mind to accept that statement. Now, when I stand in front of the mirror and I say I'm a millionaire, I want it to accept that statement. Now, when I'm standing in front of the mirror, and saying, I am perfectly healthy, and you might be the sickest person in the world, but when you keep telling your subconscious mind that, that I am perfectly healthy and whole, then your subconscious mind will have to accept it as a statement. It might oppose you one, two, three, four times, but the fifth, six, seven times is going to say, okay, you know, I accept it that you are perfectly healthy, and it will make the connection with God. Now, you can call it God, you can call it universe, you can call it aliens, whatever, whatever term you give the, the mighty creator up there. You know, we call it, you know, we call that creator Yahweh, and, and we also call him God, we also call him Elohim, we also call him Eloha, so NL, so that God out there is going to, this subconscious mind is connected to God. When you can persuade your subconscious mind, to accept a statement, and it might be simple as, I am healthy and I am whole. Simple as that. And you might be ill. You might be ill so much that you got the coronavirus or whatever other virus you got, and you're saying to yourself, I am healthy and I am whole. And you plant that statement into the subconscious gently. Gently plant it in daily. You're saying it, maybe you're saying it five times a day. Maybe you're writing it ten times a day. When you're doing that, the subconscious mind has to accept it. Has to. It cannot keep rejecting it. Because when the conscious mind, that's the husband, and the subconscious mind, that's the wife, when the two, ma- they're two, they're two married to each other. So, the, the subconscious has to accept it. The subconscious, by the way, scientifically, it does not oppose the conscious. 
it has no way of opposing it. Whatever the conscious, whatever the husband tells the wife, the wife 100% accepts. Now I know that uh, Western women find it offensive because they don't like to be subservient to men. But take it from me that if you are a serv- if you are a servant to your husband, there's great blessings in that. And I'm not saying that you have to, you know, be servant in the sense that uh, you know you have to be abused. No, in a in a in a, a relationship model. This is a model that is presented by Paul of a man, woman, and of conscious and subconscious, husband, wife, in real life, and in the, in the, in the uh, spiritual life is the conscious mind of man, and subconscious mind of man are the husband and wife. Whatever the conscious mind, husband, feeds to the subconscious mind, wife, that the subconscious mind will do. The wife does not oppose it. In nature, we have seen that the wife, the subconscious mind, does not oppose any statement the husband gives it. If the husband told the wife, I am strong, and he might be the weakest man in the town, the wife will accept it, that he is strong, and she will start to work to make him strong. So, this submission, this idea that the wife is is going to do everything the husband says, is absolutely true for conscious and subconscious absolutely true, 100% true. Under my testing, I have tested this and I have proven this to be true that whatever affirmation that you're giving to your subconscious, to your husband to wife, you know, the spiritual relationship, it is acceptable. Now, if you keep saying to yourself, I am poor, then you will become poor and destitute. If you keep saying, I am sick, you will keep getting sick. If you keep saying, I have lots of bills to pay, you will keep getting lots of bills to pay. You are making your life worse. Always step away and start doing the opposite of what you don't want. What is the opposite of you don't want? You want health. So you so you write an affirmation, I am healthy. You should speak it, I am healthy. So that will make you healthy because your subconscious mind now receives a statement from the conscious which is saying that you are healthy. So it has to work over time to make you healthy. It might make you buy a supplement. It might make a connection with God to make you healthy. But it will make you healthy. It will do the things that make you healthy. So don't ever, ever, ever make a mistake of ever coming up with a statement that is opposite of what you want. Don't ever focus on things that you don't want. If you continuously keep checking your balance, and I use this as an example, as a paradigm shift. And it's an example of $10 in your balance. If you keep looking at your balance as $10, week in, week out, day in, day out, and you say, why is my balance not changing? Every, every day I check is still $10. Everything is still $10. I had a guy, you know, who wrote to me, and I knew a man, uh, it was a good friend of mine in England, that used to check his balance every day. He would actually walk to the bank. This is more than 21 years ago. I think it was about 25 years ago. He would go to the bank. There wasn't the days of the internet. He would walk to the bank every day at midday during his lunch hour to check his balance. It was a Lloyd's Bank in England he used to go to. I remember that clearly. So he would just go check his balance and then come back after the lunch for the work. And uh, I remember it clearly, but I, I never I never asked him why he did that. But whatever his reasons was, you know, I never interfered with his life and say, why, why did you do that? I didn't need to do that. So, therefore, uh, Yael is saying that I'm a personal witness to this and this benefits, especially with the health. So, never say to yourself that I have $10 balance. This is the worst mistake you will make in your life. Keep checking your balance and it's $10. Keep checking your balance and it's $10. Let me give you a prop. Let me teach you something that is going to change your life. You take your balance statement. Maybe it's written. Maybe the statement is on a computer screen. Take a snapshot. Take a snip of it with a a, a package. You know, your your snipper on your uh, Windows 10 will take it. Take a snip of it. Take it into any graphics package, even Paint. Windows Paint, that's free. Put it into Windows Paint. Delete your balance, $10, $50, whatever it is, $100. Delete it. Put a six-figure sum over there. 
Yes, put a six-figure sum. Put one million dollars. Put five million dollars. Put ten million dollars. Look at it every day before you go to bed. Look at that balance every day and throughout the day. Look at it. Oh, I've got ten million dollars. Oh, I've got one million dollars. You keep looking at it. And one day, one day, because what you are feeding to your wife, where is your wife? Your wife is your subconscious. You are feeding this to your wife. One day, your wife will bring you that six-figure balance. And, and this is not a, some kind of a, a, a fake news or, you know, oh, maybe it will happen. No, I'm giving you something that works. Okay, so do it. Don't ask questions about how and why and where. See, most of you are stuck with the how, why and where. That's why you don't manifest everything that you're supposed to manifest. But when you start doing what your teacher tells you, remember when the student is ready, the teacher shows up. And the teacher comes with instructions. And so you have to listen to your teacher. So when I'm telling you to do this, I tell you with good authority to do that. Because if you don't, then what's the, what's the hope? What's the hope? Because what's your logic going to say? I have $10 or $50 balance? Is that the hope? Or what's the hope? A hope might be that, hey, I never get over a $100 balance in my account every month. That might be the hope. But what is the expectation? Certainty. You know, I said never use the word hope. I said use certainty. I certainly have a million dollars in my account. I certainly have ten million dollars in my account. Let me tell you a story, a true story. There was a man, he's actually on my Facebook, uh, in my, I'm actually, uh, got him as a friend. Good man. He's from, a, you know, he's from Asia. Now, I believe he might be from Indonesia, though I'm not 100% certain. He's a billionaire, by the way. He's on my on my friends list. I read his testimony and I spoke to him as well. Uh, you know, I had a little chat with him. He's a nice man. I said to him that, you know, he has a very encouraging testimony. And his testimony was this. He put out a writing, a script, little script that he wrote. In the script he said, I have a hundred million dollars. Think about it. He said, I have a hundred million dollars. Now, he just started writing that script. He said, he said whether it was a tablet, whether it was a telephone, whether I traveled on a plane, I kept putting down every day. He didn't say how many times, maybe five times, maybe ten times. He kept writing, I have a hundred million dollars at the end of this year. I have a hundred million dollars at the end of this year. I have a hundred million dollars at the end of this year. Kept doing it. After one year, or approximately one year, he set up a company, just during that year, he set up a company and he, and he sold it for one hundred million dollars. Now, this is a true testimony that I, I, that I read and I heard. It's on the internet, by the way. And so, I am telling you something that is true. So, when I tell you with good authority that make a prop, this is called a prop, where you make your balance statement a six-figure sum and you look at it every day before you sleep and you look at it when you wake up, guess what? Your subconscious mind is going to get used to those numbers and it's going to say, I need to bring this number into the, the, my husband's life. But who's the husband? The, sub, the conscious. So, the subconscious, which is connection to God, which is, remember what I told you last week, I gave you a secret last week, whenever it says the word pray in the Bible, read imagination. Whenever you read the word pray, read imagination. That's what it means. So, you ima- do your imagination. You see you getting yourself that million dollars, that ten million dollars. See yourself getting it. And when you add the emotions, add the emotions, you will receive it. That's what I can tell you. Now, there are a lot of things I can say. And I can, you know, add a lot of, uh, you know, I can fill the gap. But I'm not going to fill the gap. Because what I'm telling you is what works and what doesn't work. Let me tell you what doesn't work. If you keep looking at your balance every day and it's, let's say it's 50 bucks. What's not going to work is not going to increase unless you apply the technique I've just given you. So, by you keep worrying about bills, more bills will show up. By you worrying about health, your health will deteriorate. So, please, do yourself a favor. Don't do those things. And uh, Olivia is saying that please do the midbrain meditation. So powerful. 
Yes, absolutely. I've done the midbrain meditation technique. I've recorded it. You know, a lot of you asked for it. I gave it to you free. And it is available. If those of you want it, write to me. You can have it. It's free. I don't charge for that. And there's also another uh, meditation that I gave uh, uh, Eddie. Eddie, you have my latest one, which is on trial and test. How is that doing so far for you? I think I may have given that to you and, and Yael. You may have that as well. So, I have another meditation out that is on trial and test. If you want it, I can give that to you as well. I don't know what I labeled it. Let me just have a quick check because uh, I may have given it a label. And what was my label? Let me double check it. Uh, let me check. Uh, yeah, it's called Third Eye Activation Meditation. Third Eye Activation Meditation. I compiled it on the 9th of March. It is available. I can give it to you through email. So if you, those of you want it, write to me at shimon63, S-H-I-M-O-U-N-63 at yahoo.com. You can have it. Uh, Eddie is saying that it's going well. Opportunities are presenting themselves. And I'm staying committed to the end goal. Bruch Hashem Yahweh. That's great, Eddie. Great to hear that. So those of you who want the latest one that I compiled on 20, on the 9th of March, that is now I can dish it out and I want you to test it. I want you to use it. It's very powerful. It's similar to the midbrain, but it probably, I would probably say it's even a little bit more powerful than the midbrain. So, uh, I would ask you to, to those of you who want to put it to the test, you're welcome to have it. Just write to me and I'll give it to you. Now, of course, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm usually, you know, as God gives me intuition and understanding, I usually do things that, that will help, but I keep saying to you the same thing over and over again, is write your script. 14 days in, 14 days out. Meditation, daily, non-stop. Then, you have your visualization. I encourage you to do it for three days only, max. Then let go. Don't do it every day. Do it for three days, then give yourself ten days break. Even two weeks break, that's okay. Ten days, or you can do, or you could be doing different visualizations. You could be doing one type for three days, then maybe you have another type that you haven't done, and you could work on those. So you could do it like that. So, uh, my advice is that if you apply these techniques, and I can, I can certainly guarantee a change in your life for the better. Now remember that we are talking about facts versus what appears before you. You know, you might say, oh, the facts are that I had a fight with my mom. That's the facts. And I tell you, I don't care about the facts. I could go back in time and erase that fight with your mom. And your mom will be very happy and lovey-dovey to you, you know. They'll be like, the fight never happened. So that's called rewriting your past. You can do that. Because what your past is, is just a memory. And we just go into our mind and we modify our past, and we no longer have that fight. It's called rewriting your past. And I also teach that as well. There is a way to rewrite your past. If you had a fight with your mom, how to you know fix that, fight with your brother, sister, spouse, whatever. All can be fixed. So, therefore, we have the, we have the power. We are the operant power in this world. And we, the operant power, are made in the image of God. Guess what I have that God has? I have the same spirit as God has. So I am the operant power. You are the operant power. You have that power to do these things for yourself. When you remember that, then you become really powerful. Now, Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua, he was teaching his disciples same techniques, how to do them, how to apply them. Remember the time he walked on water and then Peter tried to do the same, and he did walk on water for a bit, but then he lost faith. In other words, his application was wrong. When his application was correct, he did, did stay on the water a little bit, then he started to sink. What was the purpose of that teaching? The purpose of that teaching was to do the necessary techniques to get the results. So, that basically the Messiah figure, you could say he was a master manifesto. Technically, he's a master manifesto. And he showed his students how to manifest instantly. Because he was able to do that. 
he was able to instantly manifest. He was able to raise the dead. He was able to, you know, make, you know, several loaves of bread out of a few. He was able to multiply the fish, the dinner. All of that, by the way, are lessons in the New Testament, not to outdo the Torah. The Torah is the Torah, it never goes away. Because he was also teaching the Torah, but that was a teaching methods to how to live your life, how to benefit yourself, how to be in prosperity, and not in stuck in darkness and stuck in worry and, you know, things that generally the world is into. Now, I keep saying to you, and I will say it last time, is that be careful about fake news and media. Because the media is giving you a lot of fake news. And there's a lot of worry. When people look at the media, the news, they get a lot of worry. Oh, so many people dying here, so many people dying there, uh, truck accident over there, rail accident over here. Stay away from that. You do not want to feed garbage to your mind. Your subconscious, and the conscious is the husband, and the subconscious is the wife, it needs to have clean life. The cleaner the life, the best manifestations you're going to produce. And of course, you know, we live in this world, so things happen around us, and there are things that we have to do, but this latest meditation that I'm going to offer you is going to remove negativities and blocks from you as well. So, I highly encourage you to receive it, and use it, and benefit yourself, and remember that if you are the part, if you are part and parcel of House of Israel, if you believe that you're an Israelite, then you have to send in the five dollar, which is the half shekel of the sanctuary. This is a commandment that we do during this time before Passover. So, unless I speak to you again before the Passover or after, have a great week, great Shabbat, and uh, we'll probably speak next week, and we're probably going to be Next week we speak, and we're probably going to be going through our Passover. So, those of you preparing for the Passover, remember, remove chametz, remove yeast from your houses. Now, baking soda is not counted as yeast. So, don't worry about baking soda. But if you have yeast yeast that you put in your bread, then there is a way that technically, you know, unless you have 10 tons of yeast, you know, if you have 10 tons of yeast, you can ask me, then I can sell it on to some Gentile. But unless you have 10 tons of it, if you only got one packet, then just give it to somebody. Don't throw it away. Give it to a family member who is not an Israelite and let them use it. Uh, vinegar is not considered yeast. No, vinegar is not yeast. So, yeast is yeast. So, I hope everybody understands that. And, of course, yeast-based products. What are yeast-based products? Maybe you have non bread that's made from yeast. Maybe you have, I don't know, cakes that are made from yeast. Any yeast-based products, give it to your family. And do not eat it for the duration of the Passover. Okay? That's basically the simple instructions. And then Passover, this year I'm pretty sure is a lockdown Passover. Not many people out there. You know, you may have, uh, you know, you, you may, you don't, all, you don't always have to get lamb, but lamb is a symbol. If you can get lamb, great. If you don't, then use alternatives. Because, you know, this is, this is a particularly hard time for many families because they may not be able to find meat. And I, I'm not saying that has to be lamb. It could be beef. It could be lamb. It could be fish. Those items are acceptable. Usually, what the Jews do, they put a, a bone of the lamb as a symbol. Now, I think that you could put a little toy lamb on there as a symbol too. That will work too. So, you don't need actual lamb to be there. So, my suggestion is if you can't find lamb in the stores, don't worry about it. And then just use something alternative. But, you know, have the regular stuff there like the, you know, you, you have the little coriander for the, you know, vegetable side. You have your uh, a horse radish, you know, for that bitter herb. And you have uh, the the meal part, you know, the, the, the meat, maybe it's beef, maybe it's lamb, whatever you can acquire. So with that, I'm going to pass you over to Rabbi Kifa, to Da, and Shabbat Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. To Da, Rabbi, I'll call me, if I can be, can I get a one, Mishpah? To Da, Rabbi, for that instruction, I tell you what, uh, yeah, Passover for me is... Uh, is this Friday coming up the third? 
So I don't know when you guys celebrate, but when you do, I wish you a great Passover. Because this is why my focus today will be on Passover preparation. Uh, when I say Passover preparation, what does that mean to you? Now, Hakohin gave you a lot of great instruction and guidance uh, and direction for your lives, for our lives, which, you know, if you follow it, you will benefit from it. Now, what you need to understand as well is they don't get caught up on the time capsule mentality to where, okay, I'm following Hakohin's instructions. I did it for a week, but... Uh, you know, after a week, nothing happens, so I'm going to stop. No, you shouldn't be that way. Never give up. I think I heard Eddie say this in his text message. I read it that, you know, he, he's, he's in it to the end. You know, until you reach your end goal, that's when you can stop and then concentrate and focus on something else. But never give in. What if you don't have access to fire? What do you mean, like a gas fire or... Uh, matches or, or what or the like, uh, then you can use your, your microwave. Uh, get creative. Uh, there's many options. Uh, get creative if you need to. Uh, I don't know. You can. I know here in Texas we have the uh, gas cylinders where you can buy gas and like use your your barbecue grill to cook, or you can even use gas with a little. You can get creative with it. Yeah, yeah, woman of the tent. If you don't have access to fire, there's many different ways to have fire. Microwave is a, a way you may want to look at going as well. Get creative with it. And uh, when there's an obstacle in your way, move move the obstacle or, or go around it. You know, so maybe there are some other options out there that you can consider. You know, start to think outside of the box. I think that's important. As I listen to the uh, updates as well, as, as, as every day we have fun updates as well, I heard the doctor, that one of the chief doctors that's, you know, heading, spearheading the coronavirus uh, task force, she said this, yeah, we're learning a lot from a lot of the other countries on what they did and how they did to conquer the virus. She said, but what you're going to find is there's no cookie cutter model. And I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, I don't want to attempt. If any, if, were any of those ideas helpful? Maybe if anybody else want to give the family, want to give us some ideas. Uh, please do take some answers. So no woman who can understand it. There's, there's more than one option. There's no cookie cutter way, just like this doctor was saying, you know. So you can take some of the things that these uh, countries are using and then you adapt it into your own way, your own culture, your own uh, uh, national presence that you have for your people to adapt it in. And, uh, um, yeah, do yourself a service that way. So there are many options out there. Don't get limited and think that there, you have limitations. How many of you know within the whole world you're unlimited? You have unlimited capabilities. How many of you understand that? Now, I want you to see this as well. I asked the question earlier. I may have asked it too fast, but when I say Passover preparation, what does that mean to you? Well, when I say Passover preparation, what does that mean? You're going to hear a lot of P words come out today. When I say Passover preparation... You know, I'm going to say some key things in this lecture that I wrote down, by the way. Uh, as we talk about the Passover and as we talk about this, you know, like I'm going to call it, I do agree with him that this is a form of a play. Now, as I've been given instruction to folks this week that phoned in worried about the play, you know, you begin to tell them if you believe in the Bible, then plagues, you know, plagues are commonplace, especially if you're Israel. You should not, you know, have your panties in a wad or your underwoods all bound up behind, you know, this coronavirus. You do the necessaries and you keep it moving because you are under protection. I was talking to my sister the other day, you know, she's a Christian. I was like, my goodness, you know, where has God gone with all of these God-fearing people? You, you, you know what I mean? How many of you noticed that as well? Uh, where has God gone in your faith in God and your trust in God that you always talk about? That you always run around here, you know, proclaiming, but now that there's this plague, all of a sudden, you put God to one side. <laughs> you know, God is, is in the back of the bus with Rosa Parks. You know what I mean? So you, you, you see all this, and, you, and I asked my sister, she's like, well, you know, she's a Christian. And I asked her, you know, joking, I said, you know, where is the Christian God gone? What all these Christians run around here, you know, that God has now become toilet paper and paper towels. You know, they, they over here, you know, they have made idols out of toilet paper, paper towels. And she got a good laugh about it, but she's like, yeah, you know, brother, you're right. You know, people say that they believe in this Bible, 
But when the rubber hits the road, you know, when it needs somebody to lean on, you know, it's not it's not the Bible. It's Walmart. It's it's Sam's. It's, it's you know they're using them to lean on. You know, you you hoard all these things for what? I was in the uh, our Oriental, our Chinese grocery store here. And uh, I was talking to one of the workers, and he's a young lad. He's working there, you know, part-time, learning the responsibilities of, of, of good work and, and labor, Bukashim. So he was like, yeah, I don't understand it. I was on the Internet, and I saw this woman. She brought, like, uh, 18 gallons of milk. And what caught me was this was like, there's no way that woman's going to drink all that milk for the first two years. You know, the milk has expiration date. And, you know, she'll never finish these 18 gallons of milk before the expiration date comes along. Yeah, you're right. And he said, you know, people are just running in fear. And they're, and, and this fear is making them do foolish things. Well, he said stupid things. And it's true when you look at it. I mean, young lad, he made a great statement. And I, I don't want to say this. People fear what they do not understand, right? Understanding slash it being informed means no fear. Now do you wonder why? Now do you wonder why our president, United States, President Trump, he does these, uh, he does these uh, conferences where he gets on and he talks to the American people every day? Look behind the scenes. Look behind all of the, and see exactly what's going on. What is he doing? He's alleviating the fear to die on him. He's alleviating the fear. Do you see it? Do you see what I mean? He's alleviating the fear. Why? He's bringing the anxiety level down because he's giving you the facts. And that's important. You must give the facts. You must alleviate or bring down the level of fear. Because fear makes you do what? I'm crazy. Fear. A lot of people fear because they don't understand. Most people fear the unknown because they don't know. So, President Trump is putting you in the what? In the know. I hope you all understand that. Now, for those of you who are, I don't hope, I desire that you understand that. For those of you who are in other countries, are your presidents doing the same thing? I'd just like a response on that. Are your presidents every day going before you via TV, via internet, and talking to you every day, giving you a briefing and an update with with their particular teams, respect, respect. I just want to know. I'm not here to try to, you know, slight any leader because, again, there's no cookie cutter method to it. Stop with that, Oliver. Oliver is in France for disclosure, and he's saying, well, you know, my prime minister is not doing that in France. You see, so, again, like that doctor said, there's no, there's no cookie cutter method that's going to deal with this situation. Lion Princess, I think you're in the UK, right? And you're saying that your government is going before you guys every day, right? That's what you're saying, that one means yes? So, okay, great, book the ship. So there is no cookie cutter method. I can tell you in China that's not happening. <laughs> China, that's not happening. I can speak for China because <laughs> my wife tells me. You know, she's so pleased with how President Trump, as a leader, is handling the situation by talking to the people every day and bringing down that level of what? Fear. Because... But not. Fear is, is with all of us at some level, some way, shape, form, or fashion. That's built into us. It's built into our DNA to fear. But you have to you have to put fear in its place. You understand what I'm saying? In the medical profession, we call it fight or flight. And you'll see. I mean, if you see videos, you can Google this. You can see videos of people doing like extra human type things because of an event that happened. And they either begin to fight, that's the fight side, or they flight where they run away. Or I, I've seen a man one time, uh, you know, his daughter, they had gotten a car accident, and then his daughter was trapped in the car. I mean, this man, he was like, he looked like Steve Urkel in stature, right? You know, very thin. But I've seen him pick up that car and move that car so they can get his daughter out. That's an example of fight. I mean, you know what I'm talking about now. So in the medical field, they call it fight or flight. It's a fight or flight mentality that's built in, within human nature. Within every human is built in humanity to have this 
kind of reaction. And I know, speaking as a family man that I am and that you are as well, I know all of you have seen a ex probably exhibited this in your own relations, right? If somebody messes with your son, talks about your mama, speaks bad about your wife, <laughs> you know, then then that then that raise up the ability to to either fight or flight. If somebody pulls a gun on your family, if somebody's trying to break into your house, are you just going to sit there nonchalant? No, you're going to fight or you're going to fly. That's just what it is. And most of the time here in Texas, you know, they're going to fight, I can guarantee you, because they have the tools and they're equipped to fight. My goodness. My loving wife brings me tea, religiously. Isn't that beautiful? So I want to talk about what Akoni was talking about because uh, let's go back to let's go back to the Passover prep. When I say Passover prep or preparing for the Passover, what does that mean to you? To prepare for the Passover. Now I want you to look at you know our history, the Book of the Covenants. That's our history, and we know Passover is mandated in our Book of the Covenants, is it not? You know, so again, you know, let's not get a galley. Let's not beat around the bush. And let's not try to be like President Trump called somebody yesterday. He's a, let's not try to be a sweet cake here. <laughs> you know, did you hear that yesterday? President, somebody asked him a question. And, you know, they're trying to rile up the president. But look, the president said, look, don't try to be a sweet cake. You know, let's just keep it simple. Don't try, uh, yeah, there you go, thank you. Sit down for that luxury glad. Yeah, don't try to be a cutie pie. <laughs> like, like, good. Like, look, don't try to be a cutie pie here. You know, let's just look at the facts and see what we have in front of us. People fear what they don't understand, and people fear what they do not see, what they do not, they don't, they don't envision. No cutie pies here. Let's not, people are going to come through here and want to be cutie pies because, you know, they want to know things in advance. But you can't control what's going to happen in, in, the, in, in the future. You see, people want to focus on the future, and, but don't put the future now. So they ask these questions that are, are no relevance because it's, it, it's, it has not yet happened. How about stay in the now? And don't be a cutie pie. Sweet cake, cutie pie. My goodness. We don't need no more of those folks around. We must get real. We must be in a real world. And what you're seeing here, and all of these religions out there, you see, because again, if you're here for a religion, you're in the wrong place. But you're here, you're here for a way of life, a way to live, a lifestyle, then you're in the right place. It's not Judaism. This is not Christianity. It's not Catholicism. Because you know, and I'm telling you, you see this in their communities. It's that they're running around like chickens with their head cut off. And they're doing all of these things with the actions that show to you that, wow, so who, who truly, who are they leaning on when they call themselves for these, you know, Bible believers? Well, you believe in the Bible just so long as there's no plague, correct? From what I'm understanding, that's from what I examine and what I see, because then God is thrown out of the window. And broke a shim. You know, the decree has come down that everybody stays in the house. So guess what? There are no uh, 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 congregate, congregating in these places of worship. Where is everybody at right now? In their homes? Should be. Either in your home, you know, preventing, just like I call you said, with this disease, what it needs is a host. So when you lock yourself in your home and you prevent the disease from spreading, this is one of the... The simplest, most easiest ways to deal with this plague. And when we look at the books of the covenant, is that anything new that the Institute today in 2020? Let's go back and ask the question again. What does Passover preparation mean to you? What does it mean to you to prepare for the Passover? Let me take it. You, you can respond via, via text message you like. Passover preparation. What does that mean to you? I call it that you should be doing that standard, you know, our cookie cutter things, east side of your house, you know, 
you know, you, you know, prepare your, get, get your preparation ready for your meals. I tell you, Brooklyn Shim, I went in Sam's yesterday and was able to get my cheesecake and, and, and my leg of lamb. They also had a, 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 a lamb chops in there as well. I was like, Brooklyn Shim, this is just what I needed. While everybody's running around looking for toilet paper and upset that there's no paper towels. I was so happy, super excited, that if, again, that's a tradition in my home, and y'all know all of you have your different traditions, but it's, it's cheesecake and it's Lego Lang in my bike. With a side of chocolate, of course, being the, being the Jewish Willy Wonka that I am. So, so we have to look at these things and, and ask ourselves, well, what is Passover preparation? What does that really mean? When you look at our history, as all of you are Torah students and students of the Torah, what, what, is, what was Passover preparation? What was it in ancient times? Because, again, it hasn't changed. And just, and I'm getting to a point here, because the whole point of it is this, is that just like for this plague in 2020, we're told to stay in our homes. It's nothing new because Passover preparation in back in the, in, in, our, in the Book of the Covenants was about staying in your home as well, wasn't it? The last plague that was placed upon Egypt was what? It required you to do what? Stay in your home. Worship and give thanks where? In your home. Now, there's probably a lot of, a lot of religious folks that are, you know, you know, pulling their hair out, and I don't mean literally, maybe figuratively, because they cannot go to a building now. They cannot congregate in the church anymore. So they said, I'm already bald. <laughs> so, so they can't, so they can't congregate in the church anymore. So they're like, up and arms, well, what do we do? They're following our ancient practices. They're worshiping at home. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of great benefits to the coronavirus. Well, I guess a lot of you don't understand what your, prep, your, your, your Passover preparation is. What is Passover preparation to you? Passover preparation is this. Passover preparation is preparing for a plague. Correct me if I'm wrong. Passover preparation was preparing for a plague. And not only preparing for a plague, but today, not only preparing for a plague, but preparing for the protection of the plague. Brooke is him. I thought there's going to be a lot of P words. Do you get it? Because what we call the Passover is this. It is the festival of what? Protection. Isn't it? It is the festival of protection. Brooke Hashem, if you didn't know that, that's what it's, that's what it, when you get down to the mean potatoes, that, that's what it is. Let me say, uh, you know, you can say, well, that's when God passed over, uh, uh, passed over the Hebrews and, no. It's the, it's the festival of protection. How many of you need protection this day? How many of you desire your protection in 2020? You, the book of that luxury class, you desire protection. Now you're waking up. You see, the, the, the first part of affirming is this, is that you must act. You must act. To, to affirm, you must act. And to dump or take an action. Even if it's just hitting the one on your on your laptop keyboard, that's the first part of affirming. I can tell just by student of human nature, people who take their way of life seriously, why? Because they respond. They act. You you have to quantify and qualify what you believe in and desire for yourself. And don't just keep it some mystical thing that you just keep in your mind. You have to physically act upon it. And by saying, yes, I affirm that, or yes, I confirm that, or yes, I agree with that. Those are the first steps to begin to put in motion things in the universe and attract things to you. 
That word attraction is a heavy word. It, 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 but I call you have a husband and wife relationship. And I wrote that down because I thought that's very important. Of a husband and wife relationship. Now, I want you to put up a capital R if you're a fan of romance. If you like to romance and you're a romantic individual and you like to be romanced, your desire is to be romanced, put up a capital R if that's you, if that's your nature. To, hey, man, romance is cool, Rabbi. I like me some romance. I'm romantic myself. I am romantic. I am romance. So talk for your responses, ladies and men. Hey, there's no hating. You can say that you're romantic as well. Don't get too much ease mode to think you can't say that you're romantic. Because let me tell you, a woman loves a romantic man. Flowers, you know, little, you know, little sweet cake here and there, little hunsy bunsy here and there. You know, cook me some dinner. You know, romantic type stuff. To talk for your response. Lion King, to talk for that. Standing up for the men in the room. Let a hug. Yeah, to talk. Y'all give me some more examples of, of what y'all see as romantic. To talk for that. I, I, I like that. We're going to be real this day with romance. Put up two hours because I love to be romantic. It could just be hugging my wife, holding hands, you know, fixing her dinner, you know, taking... Giving her a break from Nakshan, who was just mad. Six months going on 26, Rufus him. <laughs> to just be romantic. Tell you, just to tell your husband and your wife that you love them, that you care about them, that you appreciate them. How many of you know in a relationship, romance is very important? Although, there is a saying within the nations that there is no romance without some finance. <laughs> I've heard, heard that many times from my contemporaries in the medical field. I tell you, these women nurses, hey, ain't no romance without no finance. You know, oh, that's what they say. That, that's one of the things they say. But how many of you know is that, you know, if you want to have a great relationship, there has to be romance in it. Put up a woman to understand that. There, there, there has to be a, some folks call it a fire. Man, our relationship has a fire to it. The fire has not gone out. The fire is actually getting getting better. It's stronger. You have to have that fire, that that, that the thing that's going to, you know, stick like glue in any circumstance. Corona, no corona. It doesn't matter. But that relationship will even become stronger. And I want to talk about that. A tar to be that fire. Yeah, it needs to be. And you men and women, you women as well, as well. Husband and wife relationship is what you did to get that husband and wife. You need to do to keep them. Don't lower your standards from there because then you're going to go from a happy home to a not so happy home, from a house of peace to a house of not that much peace. Now I'm segueing this. All, I'm gonna tie this all together in a minute. Now I want you to understand this is so very important that we understand this. Is this? Is that? We must look at romancing our desires, our imaginations, our affirmations, our scripting. It's like you go on on a date, and it's like you're doing all you can to please that person, that individual, because you have a love and affinity and a, and a, and a desire to just be with that person. That's how you should be with your affirmations. That's how you should be with your visualizations and your scripting. It should be romantic to you to want to do this. Not, oh, man, this is just some, you know, chore that I got to go. No, you should make it romantic. Romance it. Make it beautiful. Your visualizations, make them beautiful. To where the emotions come. And then when you go to that husband, and you go to that, not husband, but maybe girlfriend and boyfriend, and, and the man proposes and says, here, here, I have this ring. I want you to be mine. Or here, I have this gold brick. You know, y'all. I want to give this to you as a gift, as a token of my love for you. And then the woman or even the man starts to cry. Isn't that beautiful? That's love, man, at its root. That's relationship at the core. 
Because, again, it does incorporate emotions in it. We're emotional creatures, aren't we? So we should be the same with our affirmations, with our visualizations, with our, our scripting, with our desires. It should be romantic. How many of you are with me now? You see how I'm tying this together. It needs to be this way. And you need to make it that way. Because then, you see, that's when you're going to attract those things that you want in the universe. That's when you are I'm going to give you an example. We'll go even deeper. Say like you want to be a millionaire. Or you may want to be a billionaire. And who says that you can't? So you begin to script that. But again, you begin to study people that are millionaires and billionaires. You begin to, you know, watch how all these people became millionaires and billionaires. And, and again, that, that adds fuel to your fire. Because remember, this is a relationship. It is. It's literally a relationship. Now, you're doing everything in your power to attract money to you, right? Well, how are you going to attract money to you when you're thinking like this? Oh, I'm never going to have a thing. If you're writing these affirmations, oh, yes, yeah, you're seeing all the negativity when it comes to money. Well, guess what? Money cannot be attracted to you if you come in at money negative. Oh, uh, that husband can't come to you if you come in at men in a negative way. It don't have to just be money, but I like to use money. Because me and the money have a friendship that's going to last forever. Money is my friend. And our friendship will last forever. Why? It's because that, that, that phrase that I just said will make money want to be attracted to me. You understand what I'm saying? So, it's, it's a, again, it, 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 it all boils back down to a relationship. Everything in life boils down to a relationship. Now, how do you handle the relationship? That's what you have to look at. So, so Hakarian is giving us tools, and I just expound on the tools. That's all I do. But we've been given the tools from the Kohanim, from, from the going on how we have to live our lives and make our lives more abundant on this earth that we've been given dominion over. It's unfortunate that a lot of folks just don't have the tools. Or just following the wrong instruction. Because they're listening to the wrong people. So you see relationship here? Is that you must make your desires romantic. Oh yeah, I, I want to know how, so what, uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you're thinking like that, my goodness, you're never going to get that new house. That new house is not going to be attracted to you. But you go and you get all dressed up and you're looking at all kind of houses and you're looking at potential. It's just like going on a date, a husband and wife or a boyfriend and girlfriend. Or you just out there looking. You're on the hunt for that special one. It's the same thing. You go looking for that husband and wife uh, after not taking a bath for a week and not grooming yourself up and, and, and not combing your hair. And, and just, you know, smell like, you know, yesterday's dark can. No. You dress up, you make yourself look pretty, you make yourself look handsome. You, you find those right words to say that's going to make them feel good. It's the same thing. You must romance your desires, your wants, your affirmations, your scripting, your visualization. Romance it. And like how Corey said, bring emotion into it. When you you feel that just that, that moment to where, oh, she said yes or he said yes, and you start bawling and crying out of pure joy. And I know all of you have seen this on TV or even on commercials. Somebody popped a question and our emotions just be overwhelmed with emotion. Or you may watch some particular movie that just get you so emotional. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, it's so emotional. And emotional out of joy because you're just so happy or it just touched you in such a way. It gave you such a good feeling that it sparked the tears to come in. Tell you. I tell you one of the greatest movies when we look at our history and why I'm in North America. You, you know one of the movies you want to watch that are really supposed so, Soak up those emotions, understanding where I came from, understanding that my lineage only goes back, that's recorded, only goes back to a plantation in North Louisiana. 
that was given to my, my ancestor when the slave master passed away, he gave her the plantation. When I watched that movie, Glory, how many of you seen that movie, Glory? Man, I cannot watch that movie without crying, and I cry out of joy. How many of you, how many of you actually, put up a capital C, you watch that movie, Glory, and you cry. But I, I cry out of a just like, uh, how can I would encourage you to watch that movie? That is a, is a great movie about the history of the, of the so-called black people in America. It's called Glory. Civil War movie. How about Civil War? And the role that the people of color, the blacks and the browns, played in that war. To fight for what? For freedom. And let me tell you, the whole movie, it was always, you know, in the back of the bus. But when it came time to fight, I tell you, they outshone everybody. Even to the point of giving up their lives. They're, they're watching. All the great actors was in that movie, right? How many of you have seen the movie Glory? I would encourage you to watch that movie. I tell you what. It just, it gives you a feeling of like, wow, man. You know, it's a beautiful movie. It's called Glory. Beautiful, long movie. Beautiful movie. Beautiful movie. Beautiful. But I cannot watch that movie without crying. And I don't cry out of just, like, anger. No, I'm crying out of joy. Because I see, and it, just, it, it gives you a feeling of just like, wow. Some of our ancestors may, may have been participants in that. In some way, shape, form, or fashion, fighting for freedom. At the risk, at the cost of losing their own life. For I say, Brooklyn Shannon. So that's one of the movies that does it for me. That's definitely one of the movies that does it. Now, for some of you others, you might want to you, you give some examples of movies that do it for you as well. That just sparks your emotion, uh, uh, emotions of joy. To so where it's so overwhelming that you start to cry. Because you're so happy, and you're so proud, and you're so inspired. That's the word, I call it. Inspired. You need to be inspired. When you do your affirmations, you need to be inspired when you, when you do your scripting. Inspiration. You need to go to bed inspired. Before you close your eyes, be inspired. Not with negativity, but with positivity. The things that you want in your life. The things that you desire for yourself. And you know there's already people that have those things. Be inspired by them. This is why it's always positive to look at uplifting things. Because that's going to help you attract the things that you want in your life. It's, it's, it's opposites don't attract. You cannot be putting down money, seeing negative dollar signs, and saying that you're a millionaire. It doesn't work that way. I was telling this to my daughter, whatever you want to do, be that person within yourself, and then the outward person will become that. But you have to be that person within yourself. Already see yourself as that person. You are that person right now. See, but logic won't let you understand that, because logic will say, well, you are that person right now. You're not good at what you want to do, what you desire for yourself. Well, when you start to think that way, is that going to attract that person to you? Some of you want to make, but if you want to make and you see they're saying, oh, I'm too ugly. I'm ugly, duckly. I'll never get a mate. Well, guess what's coming to you? You can affirm all of, I want a husband, I want a husband, I desire a husband, I want a husband, I want a husband, I want a husband. You can write that all, you want a marvelous wife. But you sit there and say, well, no man is going to get with me because I'm ugly. I don't see myself as attractive. Well, guess what you just did? You're definitely not attracting, you know, that particular energy to you that's going to get you the man that you desire for yourself. Are you with me this day? It's important that you understand that. It's very important. So we have to romance our desires. We have to romance. It's a relationship. I want you to see this as a relationship. And I thought he put it beautifully. He talked about husband and a wife. The subconscious and the conscious. 
They have to marry. They're not supposed to be fighting each other. They have to come into agreement. Together. Before you can be able to attract those things that you desire for yourself. And it's not about by force. I don't want nobody to love me. I don't force my wife to love me. She loves me because she loves me. Because she desires to love me. And she don't, I'm not forcing her to love me. I, I don't, I, I don't force my newborn son, my child. I don't, I don't, for, I, I don't force him to love me. You will never attain anything worthy of heaven in your life if you force in the situation. Let it happen naturally. Let it come naturally. Through what? Through a relationship that's based on, hey, romance, love. It's, it, you know why I like that for me? To do it. You know why I visualize? Because I love to do it. We're, we're, we're so, so, such powerful creatures to where we're able to create our own world the way we want it. Regardless of what we see before our face, we create what we know will be now. Well, Hashem, it's now. You just wait for everything else to catch up, but it's now. You have that husband now, and you need to act just like you do. You need to act so that you can attract. But your actions to be right. How many of you are with me this morning? It's so very funny if we understand that this. There's a certain way that we need to act. And you need to act and always understand that it's based on a relationship. I'm in a relationship with who? With yourself. How many times throughout through the years when we've been talking about the first thing you need to do is love yourself first. Well, how do you love yourself? You're learning steps on that today. You've been learning steps on this for the past few years. Am I correct? We've been teaching on this. Is that you got to love yourself first. That's first and foremost. Who is self? Subconscious, conscious, logic, all that's got to be put into play. That's all, that's all your makeup. That's all part of your being. Human being. That's all part of your being. And last time I checked, everybody in this room is a human being. Everybody listening to me on YouTube, you're a human being. So you cannot discount what you are. But you need to use the tools that you have to, to benefit you, for your benefit. Not for your demise, not, not to lessen you, but to bless you. You see, in the word bless, there's the word what? Do you see it? There's the word less. How many of you see that? Write the word bless it out. In the word bless, there's also the word less. How many of you see that? That's only a moment, by the way. So, you need to be in order to bless and be blessed. You need to be. Because if you don't be, guess what? Remove the be. And what do you have? You have less. How many of you see that? That's like revelation from Mother Wisdom. You see, so you must be. And when do you must be? You must be now. You must be that now. To drop in your responses, Oliver and Apara. I guess everybody else is already sleeping. But don't get this. Listen, that's not in my notes. That comes from Mother Wisdom. I only speak what she tells me to speak, and that's it. So you have to be. You have to be romantic now. You have to be love now. If that's what you desire for yourself, then you have to be that to attract that to yourself. You have to, listen, you have to love money to get money. Money not going to come to you if you don't love it. I'm telling you that right now. That's, it's all a part of relationship. If I don't love them, please get the point. They'll never come to me because I don't love them. Are you with me? <laughs> it, sometimes it's too, so simple, but we miss it because we want it to be more complex. But it's so, it's so creepy. People, it's telling you. Excuse the terminology, but I mean, come on. We get to the grace of the grains here. 
you, 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 you must, you must be to bless, to blessing. First part is to be. You must be positive. You must be loving. You must be romantic. Not later. You must do that right now. You be. You be bold. You be. You be rich. You be. Uh, 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 help. You be bold. And I'm not talking in the English language here, but I'm saying to be a blessing. How many of you are with me this today? Like, oh, Rabbi, you're going off talking to support the Sephardic language that was invented by the black people here in America. No, you be, you be, you be now. You understand? Be now. Because if you don't be now, guess what's left for you? It's less. Because that's the other side of the blessing. You're, you're going to lessen yourself because you desire not to be. You see? Be. You be a millionaire. You be a billionaire. You be. You be. I mean, this is the fundamental bedrock of of the foundation of of attraction and desire. You be handsome. You be beautiful because you, you that's what you are now. But no, you're telling yourself, oh, I'm nothing. Oh, I'm poor. I'm looking at these bank statements like I couldn't talk about. I'm looking at these bank statements, and they, they don't be rich. <laughs> they be, I be broke. Well, guess what you're going to be? You're going to be broke because that's what you see. Yourself being. Wow. What was you? This is the bed. This is ground roots. <laughs> this is rock bottom foundational stuff here. Romance yourself. Love yourself. Don't degrade yourself and put yourself down. You see, you're looking at the circumstance that you see, and it's totally destroying you and lessening you because you, you're not willing to be. You just look at what you see. So you don't be. Oh, well, I see the bank statement and it's the physical evidence on the ground that this is what I am. Are you kidding me? You can be more than that. What do you want to be? You'll be a millionaire. You have the ability to change your world. You can. Don't wait for God to do it because he never will. You are God. You can change your world. Too many times we've been hoodwinked and bamboozled, Mr. Hawk, uh, to think that we got to look for a presence outside of ourselves when the presence is already within us and he's telling us to be. Presence is saying be. Yahweh is saying be. Christians talk about it all the time. What's that scripture they talk about in Matthew, the be attitudes? You need to be. How many of you heard that? I know if you're a Christian, you heard about it. And I'm pretty sure your pastor used to preach about it. The be attitudes. You need to be. I think it's somewhere in Matthew. The importance of being. What? Be what? Be strong. Let the weak say that I'm strong. Be strong. Be whole. Be complete. Be health. Be well. Be prosperity. Be relationship. Be husband. Be wife. Be. But what you don't see, you can't be. Because you see and you don't be. Wow. I don't mean to confuse you, Mr. Hawk. But these are just the facts on the ground. I didn't see my wife in America because she was in China. I didn't see her in America. But you know what? I said my wife be in America. It's what for me today in America, Baruch Hashem. And she's totally happy and totally grateful. And she tells me that more and more every day, especially with this corona. She understands that my being saved her life because I, 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 I beat her here. <laughs> I beat her to America. And you can be, you can be any situation, you see. A Torah says you cannot achieve if you deny yourself. You, that's so true. Yet, people write this on the keyboard, and yet, 
they, they still have an eye on themselves and how they believe and how they think. Because they think what Don't think what you see. Think beyond what you see. Isn't that what the Messiah was trying to tell folks when he walked the face of the earth, the Master Yeshua? Think beyond what you see. Be. Be walking on water. Don't see the water and imagine yourself not walking on it. Be walking on the water. Be that businessman. Be that entrepreneur. Be it. Well, you don't know all these obstacles. So what? There you go again. You're, you're, you're lessening your attraction to you. You're lessening whatever you desire for yourself to be attracted to you. It's almost like shooting yourself in the foot. And so you cannot walk on two good feet. And you have one good foot and the other one is just useless. Don't shoot yourself in the foot, Mr. Paul. Stand on your two feet and be this day. We have a, the marvelous advantage of having the coding in our gates, up close and personal, HD quality, to give you the guidance and instruction that you need to be whatever you want to be, whatever you want to be. You could be it. You could be it now. Be it right now. But at the same time, as soon as you come, as soon as you come out of your being mode, you less yourself. You shoot yourself in the foot and you say, oh, yeah, you know, that's an inspiring lecture, but, you know, I'm a, you affirm everything to the negative. Well, yeah, o o only only, only in, 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 in horseshoes and donkey tails will I ever do that. You must begin to learn, your, learn to love yourself and romance yourself first. To learn to establish the relationship that's with inside of you. Learn to marry the conscious with the subconscious and put logic in its place. You must learn to put all this together. And it may not happen overnight, but when you begin to really practice it and make it a part of, of who you are, when you begin to love to do it, this is a relationship. When you begin to love to do this, oh my goodness. It becomes so easy, and it becomes second nature. And if you see everything attracting to you just the way you wanted it, because you love what you're attracting, you become that magnet to attract it to you. That's the beautiful part of it. You become that magnet to attract it to you. And attraction is real. It's not based on anything phony. It's not based on anything phony. It's real. And it becomes a part of your life. Just like when we look at the books of the covenant and we see the Passover. The Passover is real. It may have happened many years ago, the event. But we're told to keep the Passover just as real as it was back then, real today, to remember the Passover. That's a relationship that we have with the God that we serve. It's a real relationship. It's not based on anything phony baloney. Passover preparation is what? Preparing for the plague. <laughs> That's what it was. Prepare for the plague and to prepare for protection. That's the two things I want you to get out of Passover as to get ready to celebrate coming up for whatever day you want you. He and with our active forefathers are not. I'm with that calendar, group of Shem. I give thanks that I can keep that calendar, group of Shem. I give thanks. And if you can't, let me get some Passover notes out here. And if you can't, make sure if you work on that day that you give that money to the Kohen so you're not working on that day. Because I still understand is that people need to work. People do need to work. Especially, listen, I'm a, I'm a nurse. <laughs> I'm on the front lines right now. <laughs> I'm a nurse. And that's what we do. That's what I signed up for, to be on the front line. Why are nurses and doctors going to go hide in their house now right now? This is when they're needed the most. They're on the front line. So if you need to work on those days, on that day, then you give that money back to the Kohen, that money that you make for that day. That you work from on the Passover from sunrise to sunset. You give that money back to the Kohen, and you cover That covers you. So you, you didn't work. You just provided great service to somebody on that day. And also understand that we don't come to the Passover empty-handed. 
Always remind yourself of that and remember it's a relationship, a relationship based on what? Love. I'm romancing my Passover. How many of you romancing your Passover? Well, I'm romancing mine. I take it serious. And I want to I, I wanna perform and give out the best energy for the Passover so the Passover energy can come back to me the same way. Because I am Israel. But a lot of people, they only Israel just with their lip service. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I understand time and time again that the cooking has saved my life many a time. And he's given me a, an abundance of a life. And I appreciate that. And I always will. I'm not running my Kohen under the bus. We're told to not forsake the Kohen in our gates. We're not told uh, 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 to run our Kohen under the bus and to treat him like trash and to disrespect him and dishonor him. Woe to you that have that kind of thinking. Woe to you, because guess what you're attracting to yourself? And I'm not putting on no warnings out here, but I'm just telling you the facts on the ground. Israel, if you call yourself Israel, now listen, if you're not Israel, I don't give a flying clue what you do to the Kohen. Because that's between you and omnipresence and, and powers. That, that's, but if you call yourself Israel and you disrespect the Kohen, run him under the bus, don't forsake, and, and, and you forsake him in your gate, shame on you. And you better check what you stand for. Because then you better need to leave this Bible. But now, when the Quran is here, they don't lean on the Bible. They lean on Sam's and Walmart. And they, and they lean on uh, 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 continental toilet paper. <laughs> and, 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 and paper towel. Don't be that type. Because get this. Remember what we talked about? Passover preparation? That's what preparation is preparing for the plague, but it's also what? It's also preparing for protection. Our protection today comes in the form of who? Again, another P word, the priesthood. Israel protection has always been the priesthood. That will not change. Just like the Passover would not change, the priesthood would not change as the protection for Israel. Because last time I checked, who gave us the instructions in, in, in our book of the covenants to Israel about how to keep the Passover and what to do? Now, mind you, how many of you understand this in our history? That a lot of the Hebrews did not eat the Kohen in ancient times. How many of you understand that? They didn't put up blood on their posts. They wanted to stay in Egypt. Well, guess what happened to them? I, I want you to understand, not all of the Hebrews were on board. With the Kohen, not all Hebrews listen to Moses and Aaron. Because they figured, oh, oh, we have a better way. <laughs> oh, we kind of like it here. Matter of fact, I done got used to it here. I done got used to this environment and this way of life in Egypt. I'm not trying to change this. And one of the greatest, and I tell you, law of attraction, yeah, they, 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 it, I mean, perfect law runs circles around the law of attraction. But let me give you this. The law of attraction has a, has a good benchmarks in this. They have a good bedrock foundation. And they say this. They say this. They say this. One of the key phrases is they say this. You have to be willing to accept change. Number one, the first thing is, you, who do you listen to? And number two, this is the bedrock, is that you have to be willing to accept change. Wow. Think about that for a minute. You see, the ancient Hebrews, a lot of them weren't willing to accept change. No, like build, making these bricks, and I become a professional at making these bricks. I agree for deals with that, and I'm happy in this lifestyle, the life where I'm at, Luca Shell. Then so be it, and they stay by choice. But then they lost the protection. Why? It's because they firstborn died as well. It's because they didn't follow the instruction to put the blood on your post like they were supposed to. Maybe, did, maybe they didn't even keep the Passover. Who knows? I'm like, no, no. I, I, I'm converting right into, you know, an uh, Egyptian. I want to be Egyptian. I like their lifestyle, but conditioned to this lifestyle, and so be it. Same, same boat true today. Why, when the Kohen is known, and he's in the world, why? And you look, people that call themselves Israel, you have 
Why aren't more of the Israelites coming to the Kohen? Because this is a, is a practice that was put in place. Not nothing new. This is old. This goes back to the, you, you know, to the birth of the Passover. To the birth of protection from a plague. Is that most people don't want to hear that. Very few. Very few Israelites. Very few Hebrews. Listen. And then guess what happened? And then there was taken in those that weren't Hebrews. And they listened. They were like, wow. I, I saw with my eyes what this got into this great superpower. I'm on board. What do I have to do? Moses said, come on. You can come with us. That's the stranger that was among them that you read in, in our book of the covenants. The strangers that was among them. Strangers came on out. Whilst blood Hebrews said, no, we're going to lag back here. We're going to rebuild Egypt. It's going to be greater than it was before, and blah, 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 blah. So am I surprised that many folks... Uh, uh, don't come, don't come to the, don't come back to the Quran, don't come back to the sons of Aaron, no I'm not. But I am truly happy for those that do. The Israelis today, they come back and they come, the, the, the bedrock and the foundation and the protection for Israel comes in the form of the Quran, the Kohen, the sons of Aaron. That's where our protection has always been. Protection from the plagues. So this is why it's important, is that we don't run our Kohen under the bus. We don't run our Kohanim under the bus. If we call ourselves Israel, we don't disrespect them. Truly, we don't do that. We honor them. We lift them up. Because the souls, very quickly, you can forget your history <laughs> and realize time and time again <laughs> that we truly need to show thanks to the Kohanim because they saved Israel time and time and time again. <laughs> From annihilation, total annihilation. Don't forget your roots. Just like we remember the Passover, remember your roots. Remember your rich history, Hebrews. And remember, just like I was encouraging folks this week, Hebrews, the family. I said, hey, this is not your first rodeo. You all from Liberty, Texas. So, you know, hey, li listen, this is not your first rodeo with plagues, by the way. Let me remind you. Let me bring this to your remembrance. Things are part of a way of life. And guess what? Israel has left every one of them. Listen, we like these kids. We don't die. Don't the plot. It's real. That's the way Israel. Come on. You see, you see a great separation. Once the rubber hits the road or the fire is turned up a little bit, you realize who's Israel and who's just in giving you the dog and pony show. Give you the lip service. No time for lip service, Mr. Hall. You cling to what you believe in. And if it's the God of Israel, then believe in him. Believe in him. Believe in our history. Cling to our way of life. Cling to our fundamental principles. Cling to our covenants. Cling to our way of life and our lifestyle. You see, it, don't do it. That's what's important. And our bedrock, as the children of Israel, is to follow the Quran. Look, the Quran says, don't give me any monopoly money. I think that's some playing a, a board game. Who could share? So, and, 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 so, again, the, the Quran is here to benefit Israel. And I'm not being selfish, but I'm going to state the facts. The Quran is for Israel, period. And if you don't consider yourself Israel, then you don't need to be here because the Quran is, the, the is not for you. It's not for you, really. If you don't consider yourself what? A stranger. Then you come in and you adapt and you advance Israel and you adapt all the, and your desires and, and the wants just like a, it's Israeli because then you become an Israeli. If you follow the protocol and the proper process and procedures, well, go read Exodus chapter 12. It talks all about that. 
Yeah, if there's a one among you, and I'm paraphrasing, that is not Israel but wants to celebrate, participate in the Passover, let him be circumcised. And then he just, he becomes just like one born in the land. That's the beauty of the exile, by the way. Is that Israel will be formed by the mixing of all these different cultures and by those that desire and want to romance and really serve the God of Israel. Because there's a love there. There's a commonality there. There's a love. There's a romance. They romance in Israel. And that's what it is. It's beautiful. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. It's the way that we live our lives. It's a lifestyle. It's beautiful. So these are the things that we need to consider. And so if we look at the protection, and I want you to see this because I probably and I had discussions about this, and I think it's good that we put it out. The festival of protection. But we have to look at the Look at the blessings in the coronavirus. Many folks want to look at the lessening of the coronavirus. Uh, what is Eddie? Eddie said, Eddie says, and if, if my family members and friends who are circumcised per Western tradition as babies but are not Jews and Hebrews, can they sit and eat the Passover meal? Uh, I think that is a yes, they can. They sure can. They're circumcised. Yes, they can. And, well, it, again, if they have a belief in the God of Israel, if they want to, you know, follow in the, you know, you just can come and eat the Passover meal, but again, you want to, uh, you know, you know, uh, adapt all of the law. Now, if they want to convert into the way, you see, but they're more than welcome to convert and not become strangers that are among them, but become what? Israel. Convert, revert, doesn't matter. But they definitely can sit at the table with you. Uh, Ludger Cousins, buying stocks could have been good. So I think these things are important to understand. Very, very important to understand. Very, very important. Our way of life, meaning now. Good time to be buying stocks. So I think it's very, very important that we do understand this. So we got to look at the blessings. Yeah. One of the blessings of, of the coronavirus is yes, stocks are real cheap. But let's go deeper. For those of you who can't buy stocks, Stocks wise because you don't have any money. You 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 don't be rich. You see yourself as not having any money. Well listen, this is one of the blessings of the coronavirus. Do you know right now? Let me tell you this. Do you know right now is that yeah, number one, stimulus checks are coming. But what if you don't qualify for stimulus checks? I know I don't qualify for stimulus checks. But get this, there's other benefits that are out there. For a lot of you to save money, let me listen to this. Do you know if you have a problem with bills, or you have a problem paying your mortgage, or maybe you don't have a problem, but you want to stock up maybe six months, three months of just saving money, you can call your companies, credit cards, <laughs> mortgage companies, and you can ask for a freeze of your account or your payments, three months up to six months. This is coming out. And for those of you who own homes. You know, stay tuned, because down the road, I see coming as well, is that all mortgage companies, if you ask them, again, if you don't ask, you won't get it. If you ask them, they will freeze your mortgage payment, and they're not doing it in the U.K., by the way. I think they're doing it up three months in the U.K., but they're talking about up to six months of mortgage-free, no, don't, don't pay your mortgage for six months. Do you know how much six months or three months of mortgage payment? Do you know how much money that will put in your pocket? I don't have any money, Rabbi. Well, here's a great opportunity for you to stock away some money because of the coronavirus. Now, yeah, they were tacking on on the backside, but again, that gives you some leeway to raise some money for yourself. Raise your account that you see is running low. Hold up. Put some money aside that you can use for another aspect. How many of you are with me? Do you see, see the blessing? So you can you take that money, maybe invest it into something. Maybe invest it into the stock market. Maybe open up your Forex account. Maybe buy you an IRA or whatever you want. The horse and the statistics are make many affirmations manifesting. But I tell you what, stimulus check goes for me. Because I'm, 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 I'm referencing 
So think of money to that. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, you know, three thousand dollar check is not doing listen, I'm 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 a billionaire. That's what I'm talking about. I'm in the billions, man. I'm a billionaire. So again, yeah, that may be good for some people, and again, we all at different levels, but I want you all to see that this may be opportunities for you to build a little nest egg right now, just by saying, hey, can you call your credit card companies, call your bank, your loan officer for your mortgage, hey, can uh, are there any plans, can, 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 I, can I put my, you know, mortgage payments on hold, you know how much money that was, you know, three to six months? Oh, you know, your mortgage payments on the back, uh, that's money for now. So for those of you who say I don't have no money listening to YouTube, here are great blessings because of the coronavirus. How many of you are with me? You see what I'm talking about. It's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for you just to save some money, to do whatever you want at your disposal with this money. Great opportunity. Maybe for some of you start a business. Maybe for some of you invest. Maybe for some of you open up an IRA. Whatever you want to do with the money, it's your money. But here's an opportunity. If you're not going to get a stimulus check, because I know some of you are in this room are playing with book of shit. So you don't qualify for a stimulus check. I don't. I don't qualify for book of shit. I don't qualify. Because I'm, I'm, I'm seven figures. I'm eight figures. I'm ten figures beyond that. I'm bigger than that. That book of shit that I... <laughs> that, that I, I, I romance money that way. You know, not tell you, me and money have a friendship in my life, but that's what it's about. So, at whatever level you are, it does not matter. You know, don't just look at the stimulus check as the end all. Because what's going to happen when the government stops giving out stimulus checks? You see, then you're going to, see, see, what, what you, what we must go against, I understand this is a mercy. And in the entire time, Dire situation, we do dire things, right? But what I don't want to happen is, and we must guard it, it's just being dependent upon the government. I mean, you know, to where you just depend upon the government for everything. No, we need to be dependent on ourselves. You see, does it have to, this stimulus check, this stimulus check, and you waiting on the government to give you another stimulus check? No, 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 no. You manifest your billion stimulus check, your million stimulus check, your winning of the lottery. You you manifest that. You 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 you, you visualize that. You see that for yourself. You don't need the government to give you no help, and then you want to help the government. Well, for sure, all the around you. How about that? For sure. Yeah. So when you're back, it's all ways. You see. In every situation, there's always blessings. Not lessons. Don't look at the corona as a lesson. There's blessings in this. And I don't know about you all in your countries where you are, but I'm seeing Americans come together like no man's business. I don't know about you all, but I'm seeing everyday competent folks showing a lot more courtesy, having a lot more compassion towards one another. Corona did this, Ms. Bahar. I don't know about you all. If you see it as well, let's be for fun. Because I'm seeing that. I'm seeing people come together. I'm seeing people get along with one another. I'm seeing people put put aside, you know, they look, oh, whatever they had before and realize. Hey, listen, you, listen I'm, I'm seeing this at the business level. I'm seeing this at the company level. You know, companies, I couldn't tell you, companies have stopped making cars and making ventilators. Are you kidding me? Companies that were making alcohol or making uh, uh, hand sanitizer? Are you kidding me? The, the, the great power of America, the unity that happens, you see. And I can guarantee you in ancient times as we look at our, our book of the covenants, I can guarantee you that the Passover brought the family to get it. It did. It brought unity within the family. Because we realize how powerful our power really is. And we realize and we gave thanks for the great protection that we had and still do have today. This is what I want to remind you of. And as you prepare mentally for your Passover, as you prepare physically, and as you meditate on your Passover, always remember that. 
that the protection of the Most High is going to always be with you. If you see with the Kohen, he's coming to tell you things that I haven't heard outside of <laughs> outside of the Kohen. I have heard in these brief Corona briefings. He's giving you some instruction that's going to help you and guide you and actually protect you. But well, you cannot sit around here beating up the Kohen. Not physically, because you can't do it. He probably kick you in the face. <laughs> you can't physically beat them up. But so you beat them up mentally. And you beat them up with your words. That's not what the Kohen is for for Israel. So if you're doing that, you may want to consider and ask yourself, am I really Israel? Because that's not the characteristic of Israel. Come on, check. Let's look back in our history, Ms. Bob. What happened when the, when the Hebrew, so-called Hebrew, tried to beat up on Moses? What happened? And not physically beat up on him, because they could. Moses was a strong man. But they tried to beat up on him with his words. What happened to those people, by the way? I'm just going to recall your memory for a minute. What happened when some people tried to rise up against Moses, the leader of Israel, the Kohen of Kohens? Plagues were placed upon them. A poxy on their house, huh? If not death, let's 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 think about that. Let's think about the earth swallowing you up. Come on now. Don't rise up against the rule of the government of Israel. And at the top of that rule is the Kohanim. That's where we get our instructions from. Even the kings, my ancestors, they got their instructions from the capital of Rome of the Kohanim. That's just what it is, man. <laughs> the king just had to sit up there and look pretty because he had an arsenal of counsel behind it. And he just had to di di dish it out. Rufus, yeah. He's just a figurehead. But behind the scenes, everything was run by the Kohanim. And if you want it to be success, you, you better keep that formula intact. So, what I want to you? Who have this thought process that the Kohen is, is, is of no use today in 2020. I would argue the Kohen is of more use today in 2020. Because we need more guidance. Back then, things were simpler. Oh, man, now we have planes, automobiles, and the cars. And 5G. So we need guidance and direction and instruction on what we need to do. So that we can continue to romance ourselves. Romance ourselves, meaning love ourselves. Romance whatever we desire for ourselves. Romance, uh, you know, our way of life. Make it beautiful. Our way of life is beautiful. It's not a burden over here. Again, I talked about force. I'm not forcing nobody to do anything that they don't want to do. And our Torah doesn't do that, by the way. It's not about force. Force. No. It's it's just totally flexible. The other F word. No force so consider that going forward is take advantage of the blessings of the coronavirus. Now, in speaking about the coronavirus, and I'm getting ready to close, I'm going to close with this, is that here in San Antonio, I was listening to some of the doctors the other day, they were saying, because they did a test on this. Now, I know a lot of people, you're not moving around and driving around, a lot of going on vacations and all that, because, you know, you're listening to the, you know, particular decrees that were put down in your particular state. Some states are easier than others. Some states are more lax, but again, this has been the thing, is that they're finding that the corona is being found more on, you know, these, uh, you know, when you go to fill up your gas and you have to have the gas handles, my goodness. They've done some tests on some gas stations here in San Antonio, and they're finding that corona is rampant on these things where you put your gas in, okay? So I know for those of you who are still working and you've got to fill up your tank, make sure you use precautions. Make that mixture of hand sanitizer, you know, that Hakarim talked about. Maybe even if you have gloves, wear gloves, glove up during that time the way you deal with your gas tank and putting gas in your car. Because we already knew this before, but those gas handles are filthy. How many of you already knew that when you go to put gas in your car? Their things are just downright filthy. They nasty. They was nasty before Corona. <laughs> you know what I mean? Again. Again, they're finding that these things are just tough, are full of just, you know, everything under the Yeah, use gloves, have that make it hand sanitized. You can go get that in your box. You know, get that equipment, make your own hand sanitized, let it go. 
while everybody running with chicken in the air, I'll run after Peter Pier, Rail and all that. You want to make your own Bukashim. And this is such a great opportunity for us to do great things as Hebrews. Why? Because we make our own stuff. And that's what I call you. He, he, basically, he said what I just said, but he showed you in action. We make our own stuff. That's just what we do. <laughs> We're Israel. We make our own stuff. <laughs> we make our own stuff. So be it. And that's the way. Listen, I'm not being selfish, but I'm just saying that's what we do. This is a great opportunity for us to get inventive, get creative, and do great things. And do great things for the nations that we're in. And to help our neighbors around us. Who could shift? I'm seeing so many great things happen. Hey, you know, people are putting out boxes outside of their home. You know, clear containers full of just non-perishable stuff that people can say, take what you want, leave what you can. And they're writing this on these containers. And people are taking, you know, toilet paper if they need it, or they're putting in toilet paper if they need if they, if, 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 if they can leave some for somebody else. Isn't that beautiful? It's humanity at work, Ms. Bob. Humanity 101. We take care of one another. And I, I, don't, I don't mean to be partial to Texas, but Texas, we big on that here. We take care of our own. We take care of our people. We all come up together or we all will go down together, but that's what it is. That's the spirit here in Texas that we do that. We look after one another. We look after one another. We're not in here trying to, you know, get all crazy. I mean, I was in a line at Sam's yesterday, but the line went so quick and it was so organized and so orderly. And we got in and out of there. I tell you, it was beautiful. You know, people around here happy, smiling, taking pictures, you know, <laughs> you know, making little jokes about the coronavirus and all that. But just, you know, we we get it on. America's strong, baby. America's strong. I'm telling my point. Future luxury class and eddies, all of you investors out there, investor mindset, you're going to see more companies come up, Shane, y'all. That's all America. America first. We're going to start. All, everything that was outside the country is coming back, and we're going to start making our own stuff here. From medicine to face masks to venom, all that stuff we're going to do in-house now. That's one of the greatest lessons that we're going to learn out of Corona. I'm telling you. There's going to be such an economic boom and job opportunities here in America. Once this Corona is done, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be some great opportunities. You just watch. I'm telling you. You just watch. So on the note, I'm going to wrap it up, but I just wanted to put out that information about, you know, using the gas tanks. Make sure you put some gloves on. Get your hand sanitizer made that I was talking about. And I want you all to have a marvelous Passover. Remember, remember our heritage. Remember who we are. Remember where our protection is. It's with the Goheen today, 2020. Our protection hasn't went away from us. Our protection is not on CNN and Fox News. Our protection is with the Kohanim, Rukashim. So we give thanks. All right? Over to you, Akoreen. I want you all to have a great Shabbat and a great festival ahead of Passover. The Festival of Protection, Bukashem. All right, and Pharaoh wants to come out of it. We give thanks. Over to you, Akoreen. Any questions, please uh, ask your questions now at this time, or we'll keep it moving. Okay, uh, to talk for that, Rabbi Kifa. Uh, there were some parts in which uh, Rabbi Kifa was cutting out. I'm not sure if that was my internet, or whether that was experience that you had. Did, 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 did you all uh, hear uh, Rabbi Kiefer's uh, teachings uh, clear, or did you have cutouts? I got some cutouts in there. Okay, I'm just going to reiterate the point uh, that Rabbi Kiefer said, is this. Uh, if you're having bank accounts, and you're having mortgages, and you're having loans with credit cards, this is what you need to do. You need to call your bank, and your credit card company and say to them that you want a three months holiday for payments which means you do not pay any money for the next three months the government guidelines both in america and in the uk to the banks is this they are not supposed to penalize customers they are not supposed to give you bad scores they are supposed to work with you if you tell them i don't have money to pay this month and next month because of what's going on and maybe you do have money and maybe you don't have money but what Kiva was trying to explain to you those instructions by the way came from me was this that you could save three months of payments now if you made a thousand dollar payment a month 
to various you know cards and and companies you could save yourself three thousand dollars in three months now when you restart your payment in the fourth month when when things settle down hopefully uh, things will settle down certainly and when things settle down and you restart your payment you will have a surplus of three thousand dollars in your account when you have a surplus at that point you could say hey you know I restart my payment but I have three thousand dollars and I can use it for some for food I can use some for bills I can use some for something else so that is what it is uh, one second sure and uh, somebody is showing me something over here that the Bank of America is is having a little uh, thing on their website that says deferral of payments so you could go to your banks and that's not just the Bank of America and by the way this is not something that is widely known out there this is something that is only known by some that not all banks are telling you this because they'd rather receive money from you than give you any break you know banks like to do that because they paid out loans and they want you to give interest on it so what you have to do is you have to be smart and you are going to be the smart cookie and you're going to say hey I need three months break you save that money and then you go to your banks and say look we have issues with the virus I need more money for food I need more money for other things so I'm not going to make payment for three months I need three months break so please put me on hold I am pretty certain I'm certain of this every bank out there will comply now if a bank might say to you that we are not going to let you off there are ways and means around that as well you can have to speak to me about that separately I'm not going to put that out publicly but publicly what I'm going to put out is this that all banks have been instructed by the president of the US in the in, in America if you're in America and in UK Boris Johnson the Prime Minister has instructed all financial institutions be lenient to your customers so you have a three month period to save your money and use it somewhere else where it's needed maybe you want to buy a car you know you use that money to purchase a car maybe you want to do some modification to your house you use that money to do the modification to your house there's a million things you can do with it and maybe you just want to have a cushion maybe it's just a cushion to have money in the bank to say I want to have money for a rainy day to take care of my bills so that is one way to do it okay it's a great way it's a great opportunity using the coronavirus at this point to do that because I know some people out there are struggling with bills and they need to buy this struggling time to accumulate money so that they don't struggle with bills so like I said don't be a, a dumb Hebrew be a smart Hebrew do the right thing for yourself and this will help you immensely during this three three months now of course in America they're saying up to six months you could get assistance but I am pretty sure that most banks are not gonna like six months but they will definitely agree to three they may not like six but then you could reassess your situation after three months you know if things are still looking as bad as now you could say another three months but if things are looking great which I am certain they will be then you can carry on your life as normal so that is my instructions to you to use this time to benefit yourselves and you know put all your payments on hold because look you got to survive and you got to live and life is much more important than making that bank payment and a lot of you are stuck in this mindset what about my credit score who cares about credit scores at this time do you see this? are you serious are you going to care about a little stupid credit score no because when you putting your payment on hold and the bank agrees they do not down your credit score now if you did not tell the bank and you just stop paying and you didn't agree with them then yes it affects your credit score but you know if you're so mad about credit score then so be it but really credit scores only matter when you want to buy a car a house take a loan that's when the credit scores matter and I'm pretty certain that most of you out there are not looking to buy a house at this time or maybe a car even but you know like I said if you wanted to purchase a cash car you save your three months loan money you can get yourself a cash car you know you don't have to borrow loans and pay payments on it it's, it's, you know, these, are, these are clever ways 
These are, are, are the ways that the rich live. You know how the rich live? They borrow of the money of others and they pay a little interest on it. They do not spend their own money. That's how the rich live, by the way. And, uh, you know, maybe that might be news to some of you, but that's how the rich have always lived. Because when they do their businesses, they don't use their own money. They, they, bo- they borrow money from somewhere, somewhere else and they set up their business. Maybe for some of you, it might be you want to set up a new business. And so that's a great way to, you know, establish some money to start a new business. So a number of opportunities out there. Uh, basically, Passover is next week, the protection festival. This really is a protection festival. Uh, the, will, the, will the credit card companies stop the charges? No. The, the credit card companies, all they will do is they will say that your interest will remain with us and your payments will remain with us, but they will, they will freeze technically. They won't go down and they won't go up, but your interest will still be charged. They won't stop charging you interest, but they cannot charge you late payment fees. You see, sometimes they charge you $35 or £35. In the UK, I think it's £12. In the America, it's $35. They cannot charge you $35 if you agreed with them not to pay them for three months. So, be smart. And, you know, I don't have to keep saying it on public because, you know, this is not information that they want other people to hear. So, do the right thing for yourselves. Have a great week ahead. Uh, and uh, Yahweh will protect all of you who are under His covering and under His oath and covenants where we are today because the Passover is a f- festival of protection. And what a great time to test this Passover out, isn't it? What a great time to be a Hebrew that when you are actually going through this plague that's all around us, let's see who is in the Torah and who is not. Because really, this is a testing time for many people. Because if you are really in the Torah, then God will give you protection. If you are compliant to the Torah, if you have been compliant, and you have been you know, doing your tithes, your zidakah, you've been doing your festivals, and you are compliant, and you serve the God of Israel, I can guarantee you this, you are protected. And if you haven't been, then see another brother. <laughs> maybe we won't meet again. You know, maybe we won't see you next year. So that is how bad it is out there. It is really bad out there. You know, people are getting this disease and they are being infected left, right and center. Now, I know that you may have heard that the Prime Minister of England was infected. And, you know, he's a fit man. You know, he, he, he cycles to work every day. He doesn't use a company car. He cycles and back and forth. So, he said that he probably got it from shaking hands with people, several people. He has to shake hands with many, many people as a Prime Minister. Now, remember, uh, was it about seven years ago, maybe? Or more than five years ago, I remember, that I told people not to shake hands. And I, I remember at that time, a lot of people took offense. And they're like, you know, what is this guy talking about? Not shaking hands? How can I live without shaking hands? But now... You know, it's in front of your eyes. We were about seven years ahead of the curve, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the health minister is also positive in the UK. So, the Kohen was seven years ahead of the curve. Your president and your prime ministers are telling you today this fact. But I told you many years earlier that don't do this kissy-huggy and don't do this shaky hands because you can pass on all sorts of germs. Right in front of your eyes today you see it. Now, today you're going to behave and you're going to say, Somebody puts out his hand, you're going to say, oh, no, I'm not supposed to shake hands because, you know, I might get something or pass on something. So this is why it's important that those of you who have the two-cup handle, or the two-handle cup, I should say, two-handle cup, you know, if you have that in your home, it's great. Use it in the mornings. Use it when you go out and come back in. Use the two-handle cup. It's very, very good, and it'll keep you safe and it'll keep you alive. That's what we do, by the way. That's what we do. So, if you don't have it, it's easily accessible from eBay. You sh- every Hebrew should have it in their home, a two-handle cup. And if you don't have it, because we, we've been teaching these things for donkey's years now, about having the two-handle cup, about having the Abrahamic-faith uh, or the forever-israel Sidur, you know, that you know, has pictures in it, that speaks about it, that speaks about you doing your morning hand wash. Now, Of course, I never said to anybody, stop doing it. So, just because I don't talk about it, doesn't mean you stop doing it. 
So it is part and parcel of our faith, part and parcel of our, the way we live. So we continue to do that. You know, we continue to, to do the right thing for ourselves and wash our hands. You should be washing your hands before and after meals as well. So uh, I, leave, I leave you with this and I love you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Be happy because the God of Israel is upon us and he's, 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 you know, his, his protective wings are upon, upon us and he will protect his own people. Bruksham Yahweh. May his name be forever and ever. Great and great and greatest. Baruch Hashem. Okay, have a great week. Have a great Shabbat. Tada. Shalom, shalom.